And we're live now. Oh, ho ho. look at that. Nerd of all trades. Fancy name. Fancy name plates. Oh, ho ho. very nice. Right on. <laughs> so it is I, your host, Colby. <laughs> and Eric, special guest for this episode. Probably recurring guest for the foreseeable future on this <laughs> podcast thing. Well, so far, I love the subject matter. Yeah, so... So we've been talking a little bit before about how not to get me permanent banned. Okay. <laughs> but, um, so we've uh, both watched uh, Maji Record, uh, season one, recently. Uh, I've seen the whole series already, but it was a while back. My life got kind of derailed. I didn't wind up making a video I've been planning to make for months. <laughs> so this is me getting back into it. I um, thought a fun way to do that would be to have Eric join me. And just gush about Maji Record because it's actually really good. Spoiler for my opinion. Um, <laughs> so uh, I've rewatched season one in the past week. Uh, Eric has watched season one for the first time in the past week, and yep. uh, most of this is me going to be saying like a thought and then being like, "Eric, your thoughts on that?" Because yeah. I'm mostly curious about what your reaction is to the show. Oh, okay, and I think that's probably the most interesting part of this. <laughs> so overwhelmingly positive definitely yes. yeah I, I really like it i like the extension into this universe mm. which you know it's a universe well worth spending time in right yes um <clears throat> in fact as long as it's still done well which was my main anxiety watching yeah. it for the first time i tried to alleviate you a little bit of that so you could enjoy the ride a bit more but mm -hmm. the first time i watched it every episode for like the first five episodes i was like okay this is actually good and they're not doing a bad job. Yeah. And yeah. then, like, by the end of the first season, I was like, huh, this is actually good, and I don't know what the fuck's going on. Like, yeah. it's actually true to the canon, as far really? as I can yeah. tell, and, like, I actually have no idea what the fuck's going on. Yeah, and really, I think there's a few things they did even better mm -hmm. than the initial series. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like they're similar in concept, but mm -hmm. I really like how they implemented them. And one of that is we have like sort of a near future science fiction setting in a way, mm -hmm. you know, like there's certain small, subtle implementations, mm -hmm. but it's a rather optimistic one apart from all the dark witches and everything. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's sort of a little higher advanced technology. It has beautiful uh, sort of landscapes and everything and greenery. Mm -hmm. And I thought in some ways that was implemented better this time around. I thought it was more beautiful in that way. Um, another thing where at least they, they kept the bar high, in my opinion, hmm. was the uh, depiction of sort of the mind palace of the witches. Hmm, you know, they would yeah. take these really cute kind of things like fabrics or desserts or whatever else, ornate mirrors, mm -hmm. and they would just twist them, you know. Yeah. And it's so jarring to jump from a regular art style to that witch's domain style, mm -hmm. right? Jarring in a great way. Totally mm -hmm. intentional. And it's totally like, I feel like you're looking inside the psyche of the magical girl that has become a witch. Yes, like, exactly. Like they loved fabrics, mm -hmm. or they loved these ornate mirrors, and now, after their downfall, you know, it's still very much a piece of them. It's just like their entire grief and life, it's all become darkly twisted. Yeah. So well implemented. And I know? think uh, in the original series, Sayaka, um, also a note for any uh, viewers or chat who winds up popping in, no one yet though. Uh, we're totally cheating with the names. We've got a little cheat sheet. So oh, if you see me dude. look over here all the time, <laughs> it's because I'm trying to remember names. But <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, the uh, in the original series, Sayaka, when she spoiler for the original series, we're gonna do that. So that's presumed you know the original series. Um, and obviously spoilers for season one of Magia Record, you've been warned. <laughs> Go watch it if you haven't already. Um, so when Sayaka goes witch, uh, she has all of the, like, musical orchestra stuff from her wish initially. And I think there's some type of connection. I'm trying to think of other witches. I mean, Homura obviously has a lot of stuff, the whole going to the guillotine and she's, like, presenting herself as a sacrifice mm -hmm. willingly for Madoka. Um, a lot of it seems to do either with their wish or like their last moments and last will in their struggle um, to either like overcome something and then like cave to that um, or just like a main sort of theme of their life mm -hmm. is what seems to be replicated 
as the idea for the witch. So I saw one speculation that first kind of cued me to this was somebody talking about um, the hand witch, who's like, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I'm recovering from sickness also. That's my <laughs> excuse for these delays on videos. So. I'm the only one in my life that's not. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> um, she, uh, in the original series, is on, like, a, almost like a spider on a series of clotheslines with mm -hmm. clothes hanging, and it's in the flashback where Homura's, like, learning how to use her abilities, and she, like, throws a grenade up its skirt to finish it off. Right. I don't know if this is... Yeah. Yeah, no, this, it's been a while, but yeah, I remember. So, uh, in it, the hands, it, I don't think it was all of them, but most of the hands, like, originate from the skirt. So there was some speculation about maybe that was, like, somebody who had gone through a lot of abuse. Oh. And I, okay. and I, that I never, was my first, like, okay. oh, shit, let me try and, like, reverse puzzle some of these yeah. witches. Right. So, uh, I mean, the subtle darkness or even the possibility of, like, hinting in that direction is, like, very Madoka. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, and that's the way I would describe this one. And maybe I'm just a twisted dude, but like one of the things <laughs> I liked about the original more mm -hmm. was that it was definitively dark. Yes. Since episode three, mm -hmm. when they open up the trap door to hell, yeah. you know, it's just <laughs> like, holy crap, there's a lot of darkness. Now, there is darkness in Magia Record. It's just, it's not as um, oppressive at times, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not as, well, grim and, you know, how do I put this? It, it's, it's not as much death, mm -hmm. you know, and finality. In, mm -hmm. in the sense that you tend to get it in the future. Not yet. Now, I was going to say... <laughs> no spoilers. That, now, that's just season one. And yeah. not only that, but, like, that doesn't mean there's none of it. I mean, like, you know, yeah. there's definitely... There's some hard-hitting points where it's like, oh, crap, are they are they dead? You know, like yeah. those, those moments in the series. So, you know, and, and that, and, and how do I put it? They stayed really true to the universe mm -hmm. and kind of what it means to go to battle in these highly magical battles, essentially, with witches... Mm. You know, and, and what you're reflecting on there. And and also, many of the different girls having to come with their own realization of, like, I'm locked into this cycle. Mm. You know, and yeah. that's reflected a lot with different people's experiences. Some of them are depressed. Some of them are angry. Some of them are dejected. There's no good way to deal with this. I mean, if any one of us were like, hey, guess what? You're not going to get to see much more of your life, probably, because you're locked into a battle, an endless cycle of battles. Until your heart gets ripped out, essentially, you know what I mean. Right. Like, you succumb to the grief, either literally or emotionally, <clears throat> or, or or you die. Right. Yeah. You could just be killed right out. So it's like, okay, that that's rough for anyone to deal with. Mm. You know, it's almost like being on a suicide mission. Yeah. Um, very much so. So it's like they're it, in a war. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They yeah. they. It's very similar to that like process of like you enlist in a war, and are like are young and naive and have these delusions of grandeur of serving your country. Yeah. And it's like, there's not none of that in the army, but there's like, not, it's like, if you watch an ad for the army, that's all it is. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a very, almost discountable percentage of what the reality is, you know? <laughs> I mean, not to get into a political thing, but just... Any country, I think you could say, the people who get in the army to try to help and do the right thing oftentimes have regrets or second guessing once they get involved firsthand about what they have seen and what the true motivations of their leaders are. You yeah. know, I think that's a universal problem just with hierarchies in general. Oh, you know? sure. Yeah. And militaries are used as political manipulation. You yes, know? and so that's gonna murky get things really murky and all uh, war is a political <clears throat> conversation about <laughs> where your borders should stop, but yeah. it's a political conversation really. Really, and then not only that, but like a lot of people, the more idealistic people that do get wrapped up into it, sure, some of it can be like patriotism, some of it's mm. just uh, military families, you know, and, yeah. and it's the generations. I've seen this happen, I've seen it play out, mm. and have a lot of people just become frankly demoralized and dejected and disillusioned you know as mm -hmm. they have to go through the real life experiences which my heart breaks for them yeah um me i was just a uh disposable grunt of the lowest order <laughs> <laughs> i never had any delusions of grandeur <laughs> <laughs> hello my name is private mud shovel um, <laughs> so anyways but. um yeah so i guess uh to start diving into the show 
the first thing I want to say is I'm going to jump over to my document notes for a little preview for those of you watching this video of what my actual uh, proper YouTube video on this is going to be like. Um, this up to here, this first page and a half, is all episode one. <laughs> and I, this whole document is five pages long. So, like, you'll see, like, this episode, I have just a couple fleeting notes. Some of them are just about, like, environmental art. Like, this was an episode's net worth of notes. Like, this one had three, four fleeting entries. And then the last episode was, like, half page itself, roughly speaking. So, uh, that's, I want to show that uh, just in the context of, I think that's kind of emblematic of my experience with the series on a second go through. Um, because now that I'm kind of freed of the anxiety of like looking constantly for, is this going to be something that's like a faithful adaptation or is this a shitty like mobile game promotion spinoff? That's going <laughs> to trash my favorite series that I'll still watch because I love Madoka. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> is it actually going to be garbage? Probably. Like, that's how I went into it initially. And now it's, like, for me, watching it a second time feels like a first watch through of the first season. Because I didn't let go of that anxiety till late in the first season. Oh, okay. Um, so, I don't know if it's because I've seen it before and I know what I'm looking for, that I feel like there's a lot of content devoid of the middle episodes. But the way it felt for me was episode one. Like, here's the world. Here's what's happening. I promise you we're not fucking with the cannon. You've got to <laughs> believe me. Look at these dope fights. We're totally not going to fuck with the cannon, though. These are the rules, remember? <laughs> They're the same rules as before. Um, and then a series of episodes that flush out instances of that world working in these ways with these particular witches in this particular city um and then uh developing these characters that we're getting introduced to over time a whole slew of new characters and then kind of like teasing in like hey it's not just new characters it's also old characters like we're mixing everybody in hmm. um and then like a final episode that kind of brings a conflict to a head kind of leaves you on a cliffhanger but also pulls everything in to be focused on this group that is really the driving force of the show is this what is this group of uh what is revealed to be magical girls mm -hmm. who all think they've found this way to get out of this fucking loop that QV traps them in right. right and which i mean putting myself into the shoes of a magical girl in this situation i would be desperate to find a way out of it yes. you know and right when they propose this even though there's some dark overtones it's like oh maybe they're a secret evil organization i'm asking myself are they right are they not yes you know okay there's maybe there's an escape but is it really a definitive escape and at what price yeah what, what are we going to have to pay for this mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean i'm against it not at all i'm actually really open-minded to yeah. it you know, but it's like, okay... There's a lot of price I could pay that would be better than what QV has well, locked me into. <laughs> well, yeah, that's totally true, but at the same time, we're in a, like, we're in a, a world where there's a horrible price that's been paid for a number of decisions, yeah. so it would make me just doubly cautious. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't get me wrong, doubly cautious, but desperate enough to never discount it out of hand. Mm -hmm. You know, even if it's not a great sunshiny route you know what i mean it might yeah. be better than what we got laid out for us because cube i mean like dude you know how, deal with the devil there man like yeah. like you got your wish and then now you have your nightmare right. so you know and yeah as far as i went i mean i think i was eased into it better because you prepped me for it mm. it took only a few shows i'm thinking like well they're laid out the universe really well. I don't have any major issues with it. Mm -hmm. And they did evolve on the concept. Like, you know, if you don't mind me going to some later stuff. Or, yeah, yeah, or, okay. yeah, It's like, well, they... they Nothing it, you've it, seen is off limits. Okay, cool. <laughs> so it's like, they, they get into the, the uh, realm of the doppel, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And kind of what that can mean. You know, and what that can mean in combat, you know, which can be really impactful. But also what it can mean in terms of, like, it kind of changes the formula of... Okay, magical girl, witch, and there's something murky in between that's going on here, and I'm not sure what the ins and outs of it are yet. Yes. You know, I know that it is a thing. Yeah. I know that it's being used. It appears it, to cleanse the soul gem. It doesn't appear to have any immediate costs yes, for doing yeah, so, yeah. aside from 
the potential of losing yourself to it and letting I, I, it kind of take control. I'm wondering about that. Is it gonna, because, you know, there's these different... And, and this is not something I know. You might know, but I don't know. But this is one of the kind of the tropes that comes up is mm-hmm. like, okay, you can use this, but it's sort of the whole Nietzsche staring into the abyss. The abyss stares back into you. You yeah. know, like, like, is it going to be something where the more you call upon this, the more it corrupts your soul at some other level? Mm-hmm. Or is it something that's more easily contained? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you know, it could be shades of gray there, too. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be absolute one or the other. Um, so that's one of the factors of it, too. The other thing that occurs to me is like especially with uh um some of the initial experiences it's, it's hard for me to tell with kaede but uh Yiroha, uh like it um her usage her initial usage didn't seem to be like a plan you know mm-hmm. what i mean it just kind of happened mm-hmm. you know so then it makes me wonder how much control she had mm-hmm. you know and i'm not really exactly sure about that or how much control you can have yeah. Two is a question, you know. So there's a lot of. I mean, I think season two is going to get into some of these things and get yeah, yes, some of these questions. Definitely. But you know, um, so yeah, I, I I I like how they laid out the universe. Um, I even like how they expanded upon it because mm-hmm. it's not really in conflict and it's not really betrayal of anything else that's happened in my mm-hmm. view. And if, if you're gonna like sort of uh, propose the idea of a genius intellect coming in, into this series and proposing a new way forward, mm-hmm. pretty compelling. You know, I mean, like what they're doing, they're sort of trying to do what a lot of people have done throughout the history of humanity. It's like, we'll take a new technology, however dark, however horrible, and try to find other purposes for it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like the going from nuclear bombs to nuclear reactors. Yeah. You know, of course, how much you're really successful in that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, there's always risk involved. Everybody watching, check your phone. Yes. (laughs) Damn this thing. Um... Yeah, no, that's fascinating. It's interesting to hear the speculation, too. I'm eating that up. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I mercilessly yes. try to kill my phone, by the way. <laughs> You're good. Um, the uh, I, I'm interested... I want to go back to a note that you had earlier about um, like the kind of near-future world that is taking place in because that's a very subtle thing that i haven't really picked up on super hard Mm -hmm. um i have a couple notes that i'm going to talk about how like a lot of the buildings have that kind of what what i think has become iconic of the series because there's been so many moments at their school where you see madoka walking down this like glass hallway essentially yeah and obviously in rebellion the kind of final scenes are in that same hallway where they were first met and first walked and stuff like this um and you get these crazy beautiful wide shots of like the world phasing in and out of existence yeah yeah um there's a lot of uh uh buildings that have just kind of general glassy kind of skyscraper looks to them. Yes. Indeed. Um, but there's a number of them where you get that same type of shot where it's a pulled back shot of the building and you see a character walking through one of these glass hallways. Um, so that's something that kind of popped for me and stood out for me. What were some of these other th- uh, things well, that stood out for you? Well, building on that, because it's mm. the same kind of a thing. Also, oftentimes it's in contrast to like lush green landscapes. Mm-hmm. And one of the newer concepts I've seen in, in proposed buildings and some of the conceptual art you see mm-hmm. is an integration to these like newer style, you know, glass and steel towers mm-hmm. with tiered gardens inside mm-hmm. and, and gardens on the roof and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it's like we know that we have an attraction to these green spaces and they make a city more livable and now they're integrating them into newer buildings. It's mm-hmm. not trivial to do it. You need to structure them differently. Yeah. But it, this is, looks like a near future version where it's just tiered. Like you could see the multi-story buildings, which to me are very reminiscent of actual Tokyo sky skyscrapes with, uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, uh, landscapes and, and uh, 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 skylines where I'm looking for. But the, the difference is I don't usually see the tiered garden effect on them, right? Mm-hmm. And that's that's new. Um, okay. and what I have seen, too, is like, uh, so Tokyo has these different districts and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And one of them to the south is Odaiba, which is just towers of glass and steel. It's the futuristic island. It's reclaimed land, virtual reality, amusement park, all this stuff. And you kind of cruise in there on a monorail. That's one of the ways to get there, right? And you kind of see all these cool buildings, glass and steel. It's the future, right? Well, you're kind of getting that feel from the buildings and just with that next level of greenery built in. Um, oh, and there's one other thing too. Uh, when they're in, it's kind of a detail, but... If, if I can interrupt for just a second. Oh yeah, go for it. So we've got a uh, spam message in chat. 
and I get to do one of my more favorite things. <laughs> Ban hammer! Boom! <laughs> Look at that. Gone forever. Never spam my channel again. All right, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, my, my only my last detail on this, because there's a, probably a lot of that I haven't even noticed or thought about, but when they're in the burger place and they're mm -hmm. kind of having discussion, there's sort of these um, holographic images around them of like mm -hmm. a, a drink mm -hmm. or a burger or whatever it was. It's near futuristic feeling right? yeah that's a good you know? point because they have that like kind of uh, enclosed yeah, little yeah. pod almost for yes. where they're eating yeah that's true yeah hmm. so it's like little details like that that kind of let me know it's like i don't know where we're at we're 20 or 30 years in the future or something like that I, you mm -hmm. know what i mean roughly yeah, yeah so yeah which I, I dig it because it's an aesthetically pleasing version pretty optimistic version mm -hmm. of a near future you know, it's like, well, what if we do, you know, make nicer landscapes, nicer cityscapes? It gives those sugary, sweet, hopeful overtones of the show that you know is not that. <laughs> yeah, it's a contrast to the darkness going on in the personal <laughs> lives. <right? laughs> you know, totally. Um, so, uh, in the first episode, I want to kind of go through um, some of the notes I have on that. Um, one of the things that uh, I was noticing was the similarity between the characters and as far as like the character design. Um, I will note that uh, every uh, character um, is designed by the same team. The story's written by the same team as the original. Um, Gen Urobuchi and um wow blanking on the other name of the fantastic writer why am i fucking terrible at my job uh, <laughs> i would help you if i could <laughs> the butcher is the one i always remember <laughs> yes i know it's easy to remember again um kill me kill me kill me akiyuki shimbo yes um so they along with uh I'm going to butcher these other names because these other names I haven't heard pronounced, but, uh, or do you want to give it Japanese speaker? Hey, I don't speak Japanese very well, but I'll, I'll butcher <laughs> it. Let's see here. Uh, I'll try to make that a little bigger. Oh, thank you. That helps. Magica Quartet. Akiyuki Shinbo. Atsuhiro Iwakami. Gen Urobuchi. Ume Aoki. Yes, those. Um, so obviously, uh, Shinbo and Urobuchi uh, were involved with the original. Um, I believe Ume was part of, uh, the, uh, illustrations for, it's not pulling it up, but some of the, like, witch layers. Oh, cool. Some of the art style came from them originally, so they were involved with the first one. I forget exactly what, um, the fourth person did, but they were part of, uh, tangentially related to the first one as well, in a minor mm -hmm. way. So, but apparently... Given this kind of grouping as the magical or magica quartet, um, which seems to be the main creative force, because I think on the uh, while Purgus not rising, mm -hmm. it also says magical quartet. So I think that's like kind of the staple production team going mm -hmm. forward is magica quartet. Um, so they must have become more involved creatively as the show went on. I'm kind of interested to find out what the story is with them. Right. Um, but so they're all part of it, and I was looking for, at the start, okay, main girl, pink girl, pink hair, okay, Madoka. Yeah. Totally oh, do, right? she, yeah. she meets a <laughs> long, dark-haired girl, or long, long dark-haired girl, who's kind of mysterious, kind of doesn't talk a lot, kind, kind of, of withdrawn. <laughs> oh, Homura, okay, and look. We've got other girls coming in too. Blue hair girl and red hair girl who both have themselves a little spat and I am now <laughs> shipping. That reminds me of Kyoko and Sayaka. And then uh, we meet uh, Momoko too who's like, okay, that's the mommy equivalent, yellow. But it doesn't uh, like stop there. You get more characters and then you eventually get introduced. I think mommy is the first one introduced. In yes, that sort of that, that, the, the, the old group, yeah. So that's when I was like, oh, <clears throat> okay. They're not just trying to create kind of one-for-ones and kind of capture that magic in a bottle again. They're doing something here. Yeah. Um, but I, on my first watch through especially, I was kind of hyper-cognizant of trying to make these connections. Like, okay, what are they going for? So she's obviously the Madoka character. Mm -hmm. This is obviously the Homura character. What, what are the parallels? What is this version of the story going to be? Trying to kind of solve it as I went through. 
But it's it's totally not that. It's just that they're designed by the same people. So of course they look the same cutesy girls yeah. with their own <laughs> unique color each time. Well, yeah. And, well, I, I actually like how the individual personalities were fleshed out. Mm-hmm. Like to me, although I can see a physical comparison to Homura, but Yachio has her own sort of like. Mm, I would say sort of a sadness and a resignation, a, a desire yes. for bonds and friendship, but but a sadness and resignation from bad past experiences and a, a feeling probably of being inescapable. Yeah. You know? And it's like she, especially with her wish being what it was, you know, mm-hmm. like wishing to live, right? So it's like, okay, great. Now I'm going to live. I'm going to have to watch everyone I love die. Yeah. You know, so that would make me pretty sad and pretty, you know, keeping everyone at arm's length. Cause the more I love you, the more it's going to kill me when you die, you know, the more it's going to rip my heart out. So there's different like personalities that, that develop, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I like it in that sense. Um, you know, with, with, with Ira, how do I put this? Like she has her sister, Ui, and mm-hmm. I don't think this is true, but I don't know the second series. I've read it, right? But it's like, Oh yeah, totally speculation. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, so I'm seeing a pink hair girl, pink hair Modica. Mm. Uh, is there is there a connection? Is there, is there a family bond? Is there you know what I mean? Is there something there? I'm not I'm not saying so simple as I don't think Yui is Modica, but mm. is there something? Is there a connection or is it coincidence? Mm. You know, it's hard. I, I'm like, it's at least in the back of my mind as this is playing out. Too many memories are lost, and it's making me wonder why. Not yeah. only that, but like, okay, so you have all these lost memories. This is more speculation for mm. you. But is it uh, a manifestation of multiple rerunning timelines, like mm. Homer's stuff, you know? Mm. Um, which we haven't seen her yet, mm. but, you know, it kind of, it doesn't even have to be her. It could be anything else causing multiple iterations of a universe. Yeah, she's not necessarily the only one who does that, though she has, in the original series, been the only one shown to. Exactly, She's not necessarily the only. But it's a mechanic we know about, so Mm -hmm. it could be Homura, it could be somebody else that has not been introduced yet that has that ability or something similar, Mm -hmm. and I wonder if that's causing sort of this strange memory. And it gets, it always gets activated around Kyube as well. And Mm -hmm. it's like, okay, so Mm -hmm. what, what does Faust have to do with all this? You know, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> so much. I will yeah. throw in a quick note. I like how in her room, they even put the mini split on the wall on her side of the wall. Mm-hmm. So the other side is just utterly barren. Like there's not even like a light fixture on her side. Right. It's like that little detail is just like, it's almost like they packed extra shit onto Iroha's side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, well, it's funny. It's like, and not only that, but all those pictures too, right? Yeah. I mean, it's very. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like, whoa. This is like, how do I put this? Either somebody was in these. I'm pictures, gonna pose for a photo. Yeah, it's like <laughs> what or, the fuck? It, it's like, or somebody has uh, other identities popping off in their own subconscious, or you know, yeah. it's like, or there was somebody there, right? And so you're like, dealing with these these manifestations. Um, so yeah, I've, uh, I, right now I just don't know because mm. I, I haven't been given enough information. Mm. But uh, you know, oh, another comparison between the two. I think mm. something that's high quality between the original and the new series. Mm. I like how the battles have played out. I like how mm. highly magical mm. they are, how mobile and how beautiful they really are rendered. Mm. Um, and I'm going to. You mind if I go to the end? Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, go yeah right so up. it's like, dude, that that battle why does mommy, mommy always have the best battles yeah it's like she <laughs> goes straight like yeah, yeah, like you know the fate uh fate uh on lunar budget on lunar yes. blame works mm. she's like gilgameshing it like yes <laughs> you know meet my battalion you know it's like holy shit you know it's always he's not true a finale was a big gun yeah well, it, yeah it's, and it's just and so i mean that was awesome and then i also like how sayaka kind of how i put it she's she Grits down and perseveres. Blood over her eye. And she's yeah. you know, like, you know. Yeah, Sayaka's a fucking badass. Yeah. That scene. <laughs> um, that scene was the moment for me where I really started to question uh, this group. Because I'm all for trying to find anything. I'm very desperate, like you said, to try to find a way out of this fucking cycle of death and witch and nothing else. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, so, as this mechanic became revealed of how you can do the doppel and it can cleanse your soul gem, I was like, okay, this is actually pretty fucking sick that that works like that. Like, if you can control it, and I'm sure that's what this organization is built around, like, trying to 
hone your ability to control it so you won't let it consume you. And there's probably a fail rate with that. Right, but yeah. That's the point of the group. I was like, okay, let's fucking go. But then, uh, one, and we'll, we'll come back to this later, uh, their involvement with witches and what were referred to as rumors yes. uh, are now kind of seeming parallel but potentially different, but we'll yeah. come back to that. And then also how Mommy at the very end seemed like she had sort of lost her own kind of will and, like, mind. She was different. Yeah. yeah. And it seems like there's it. some sort of, like, mind control. Um, and, like, the, the girl who is, like, the one of the three heads of the uh, Magus um, that are referenced, mm. uh, the only one we've been introduced to yet, um, she seemed to, like, in that car ride during the fight, as she's just getting the fuck out of there, mm. off to give her speech, um, kind of acknowledge that, like, mommy wasn't really in control by saying things like this is what she would have wanted if she could understand everything. Mm. So there's some sort of, like, loss of will, but then also loss of potential, like, mental control or capacity mm. associated with this. And you can see that throughout the fight, how she's just kind of, like, generically smiling and just unleashing hell I was emotionally. Say, yeah, she goes ham, you yeah. know, in a way that you wouldn't think she would do that against Sayaka, right? If she yeah, not. well, we saw in uh, Rebellion where she didn't unleash hell against Homura, and that's the only way Homura got out of that, is she, like, used that last opportunity of, like, all right, I'm just going to fucking kill myself then. <laughs> and then she's like, wait, and she, Homura's like, gotcha, bitch, with the foot. <laughs> <laughs> so... I, I, it's very much Mommy's character to have died for her friends. Like, there is, like, the timeline where she had the mental break and was like, fuck it, I just gotta kill you then. <laughs> if we're gonna become witches, like, yeah. we gotta die. Shortcut this process, <laughs> yeah. It's, it, talk about some commitment. But um, outside of that, it seems like her character is very, always kind of tragic, trying to help people kind of thing. To yeah. a fault. Um... I mean, even in the first episode three, it was like she was kind of like giving like comfort to Monica and Sayaka, trying to like reassure them that they can be safe, that she's got this under control. And then she kind of like overdid that confidence and projection of confidence by then underestimating a witch. Yeah. You know? And that right. was her final undoing in that timeline. Um, so I, I, I want to hear what your thoughts are as far as like what could be going on with her and like how seeing her in that state felt to you as like a first watch oh, through. Okay, the state at the end, yeah, it was like, it seemed strange to me as well. Like I don't, I don't, I don't know the why of it, mm -hmm. right? But I, what I am observing though is that like she's pretty much going full out, all on straight up heart attack like she mm. would against an incredibly powerful witch mm. against Sayaka. Right? right. And I'm like, that's not, you know, that's, that's not consistent with her normal mental state. Mm -hmm. You know, like even if she thought she had to fight Sayaka, mm -hmm. I don't think she would go that hard. You know yeah. what I mean? She would, she would probably be a lot more restrained mm -hmm. if she actually felt that she had to for some reason, mm -hmm. you know, and or at I, least express regret verbally throughout. Yeah. And she was pretty much beyond reason too. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, Sayaka broke up a fight with a sword inside the fire extinguisher mm -hmm. and a sane mommy might've been able to just have a discussion at that point. Right. You know, and then that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So it's like a lot of this just feels very uncharacteristic. So what I'm thinking is that, like, there's some kind of either mind control. Like, I would go for mind control because, like, the other reasons that I could see this happening mm -hmm. aren't in play, you know. Yeah. And so she just seems to be mentally sort of checked out. She's on autopilot and on, on full-on, full-bore attack, mm -hmm. you know. And so that there's something going on underneath this, and especially because we have the sort of the, I don't know if they're evil, but the evil genius uh, idea is sort of in play here. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they can do such manipulations. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not exactly sure. We've seen a lot of odd things happening. People uh, bringing up out their doppels, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, I don't. I, I we haven't seen that from mommy, but you know, at least not yeah. to this point. But notably, like, that wasn't what happened with mommy. It was yeah. in something distinct. I when it, she first started to like unleash all of the weapons and kind of expand her form to that like. I don't know, shifting, like, 
two orb like <laughs> yeah. L cannon. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, looks... I thought that was going to be her doppel kind of coming out, and it was like reminiscent of her gun in some way. Or, uh, and I, I was kind of excited to see what her witch looked like. Yeah, but it yeah, notably sure, but it wasn't happen. that. Yeah, at least not yet. I mean, I don't know. I can't speak to the next, but yes. yeah. But at this point, yeah, it's not that. It's just her going completely unrestrained. So mm -hmm. like, I want to know what the Magia have done to her. Yes. At this point, that's my best leading guess at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not only that; it's like it seems like a few of the other girls. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what they're doing. Mm -hmm. That they might have joined up with the Magia or not, right there at the end. Mm -hmm. And there's some fates that are undisclosed as as you come to the season and the mm -hmm. season one, right? So I'm not sure who's going to be aligned with them and who's not going to be. And there hasn't been any explanation of it either. You know, mm -hmm. there have been same discussions between some of the magical girls, the Amane sisters, and uh, uh, oh gosh, uh, Yachio's friend. I knew I, I knew I'd blink it on a name. Is it Mi <laughs> Mi Mitsuya? Is that uh, which the, uh, friend? Uh, she's oh a, the white haired girl, girl. Gar white haired, gray haired girl. Yes. Um, let me see because I have it wrote down. And I my apologies. I'm trying to either. remember. Boy, there's so many names. <laughs> yes, but I mean, there's so many new characters. It's hard to keep track of everything. Uh, Tokwa, Toka, Toka, or no, was that the? Yes, never mind. That was the um, the mag uh, Magus that we have been introduced to. Is Toka? That's right. Um... It's not. I'm not thinking Sudono. That she's the high energy uh, girl. You know. Oh fuck me! <laughs> I know I have her name in here somewhere. I don't know. I I knew I'd have to blanket at least one name. So it's like in my mind, Yachio's friend, yes. who she believes she Silver sees hair. at the seance, uh, <laughs> at the seance shrine, which she doesn't. You know, it's a, right. It's, it's it's fake. Black feather but, girl. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's it, yeah, and it's sort of okay. So she's kind of. You know, she's obviously deeply connected to her. And, well, they they're, they're truly were friends, you know? Mm -hmm. So it can't be a trivial thing for her to, to jump in with the Magia, you know? Um, and, uh, anyways, though, like, I want to see more of her story and how she got to this point. Mm -hmm. Because they were both, like, Yachio and her were both dealing with tragedy and death and loss and, and the turning of a magical girl into a witch... You know, mm -hmm. and they were having to observe all this stuff, and you know, um, it, it's unfortunate, but that's just sort of what, you know, that's what became of it. So it's like, I want to know Yachio's friend's reason for kind of going down that path. Mm -hmm. You know, and we haven't seen that enough yet. She knows that she's in the group, but I haven't seen any justifiable explanation. Mifuyu. Yes. Ah, thank Az you. Azusa. Okay. Azusa. <laughs> cool. Good Thank golly. You. Yeah. Well, Whatever. Okay, we both like the show, right? Yeah, it's, it's fucking <laughs> hard. You're not going to know all the names either, all right? It's a cast of, <laughs> It's feeling like a cast of thousands here, but I, yeah. as I see it more and more, actually, like, I've only watched the subtitled. I'm probably going to watch the dub, too, just because I like mm -hmm. it that much, you know? Nice. And then that'll probably Yay, be the yeah. names, you know? <laughs> Maybe compare the two. Oh, yeah, this, this is just triggered a memory. Totally mm -hmm. different subject, but I like to ask Noemi, my wife, Mm -hmm. questions about certain names and Kamihama we didn't see the kanji but Kami there's different readings for it one of them is God mm -hmm. Hama could be beach so God's beach okay I don't know maybe just like these little interesting things to ponder as I go through it yeah but another way to another reading of Kami is uh, paper you know but I'm thinking uh, God's beach kind of sounds at least interesting you know without giving any spoilers I will say um, it is interesting that like uh, like the the shore of the gods, like where where somebody like comes to and arrives is right. on the beach, sure, um, or on a shoreline. Um, there uh, are which or wishes that are impactful on a scale that Homer was mm -hmm. and Monica were. Yeah, like not necessarily the exact same scale, and certainly not in the same way, but. It's interesting that that would be the translation, uh, or at least components of the translation, because you could do a lot with that once you see what happens and more yeah. of the backstory. A lot of season two is going to have backstory and context for things we've already seen Good and kind of backtracking yeah. and answering some of these questions, I, which again kind of goes back to my uh, initial, like, the the... 
first episode is all this context about the world to kind of introduce you and understand. The last is like these final questions and cliffhangers and moments that were epic. Yeah. Um, but in between is just this flushed out, like, everything's solid and good. And here are some stories that we can tell with this laid out. Don't you like this story? Wasn't that a good little self-contained oh, story? Well, like, <laughs> Yeah, and, that's, and the character development was really quite good. Mm -hmm. Actually, I really relate to and feel sympathy for Yachia mm -hmm. and the Absolutely. difficult decisions she has to make, you know. And another thing that's occurred to me, you know, they're honors oh, all. They're teacups. Oh. Yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you yeah. first and saw the and previous yeah. ones, it was yeah. like, ooh, you're not supposed to go in there because that's where the teacups are. Yeah. And now we're doing it that's again. That's where the painful memories are at, mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it really rough. Another thing that occurred to me, and, and this is, again, it's conjecture because I haven't mm -hmm. seen the rest yet, but um, um, no, 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 no. We, <laughs> <laughs> we have the Magia and what they're trying to do. We mm -hmm. don't know all the whys of it, but we know a lot of that. There's a control, the doppel, the, you know. And then we have uh, Cube and kind of what that alien race Yes. is motivated to do. I want to they're, ask you about that, your thoughts on it. Yeah, it seems like they're inherently at odds because mm -hmm. the Cube alien race thing, they're channeling this like, hey, we're going to you know, continue the existence of the universe through harnessing all these energies. Mm -hmm. But they're basically, the Magia is saying, no, 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 we're not going to just let you harness all this energy. We're going to harness it, and we're going to do it in such a way that allows us to continue living. Mm -hmm. you know, And it saves the magical girls from a fate of death or or death or I don't know if you call it worse death or corruption yes. I don't know what do, what do you want to call it you know I think corruption is a good word I yeah. love the trope of corruption right I mean <laughs> and I don't mean it in a like a derogatory way either mm -hmm. I mean it's like you know I mean it in like the well, physical way yeah yeah you're you're physically corrupted psychologically corrupted not in an ethical way yeah but like in a you know like your own psyche is getting broken down and destroyed like if you don't die you live long enough to see yourself become the villain quite literally yeah, yeah. so it's kind of <laughs> so there's that element so but if they're trying to use the same foundational levels of energy mm. to different purposes mm -hmm. they're almost inevitably going to be at odds i will say i don't know and this isn't a spoiler but i just uh, as only with the knowledge of the first season I would say that I don't know that the transformations of in and out of Doppel, mm -hmm. um, while I would assume since it's not a full translation, uh, does not release as much energy, mm. I wonder if there's a negative entropy effect when you transform back, mm. or if there's still this massive release, and then just not a full release, and it's contained and kind of takes your own kind of personal power and willpower to retch it back. Right. I wonder and if there's a net negative for the thing, or even if there is, if it's enough of a net negative when you regain control to get that entropy released back to net zero. Right, I mean... So there may be a reason the cube or, or the incubators, rather, are going along with it, because maybe there's still a net entropy gain. It could be to their benefit. Mm -hmm. um, but it's weird because okay, it's I guess definitely it, not their plan though. <laughs> definitely, definitely not their plan. The other thing too is that Kube was uh, pushing for the investigation to have Mommy look into it because mm -hmm. Kube you know falls over unconscious because he can't she, he can't enter Kamihama, mm -hmm. and so now they're investigating it. Meaning it wasn't underneath their authority. And how much it is physically against what they're doing, I don't, mm -hmm. I can't know that. If it's it's definitely a different um, concept, and if it's a different set of objectives. Mm -hmm. I guess they could be working in concordance eventually, but I wouldn't count on it. It seems, if I've this, and I can't know yet, but it seems just rolling the dice, usually when you're taking some form of power and you have two groups that are using it differently, mm -hmm. they're, they're not necessarily allied, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, I want to get X done, well, I want to get Y done, and then... There's only to, one tool. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's whatever the, we're going to do with this resource, we disagree on that. Yeah. So at some point that that suggests conflict to me, mm -hmm. but they could have some more elaborate story there. I'll see, have to see it plays out. I guess. So we've seen uh, incubators that are normal outside of Kamihama, but the only one that we've seen inside Kamihama is the little baby Kube. Yes, Chibi Kube. I picked up on. Yeah, <laughs> I found that very adorable. Um, what uh, are your thoughts on baby Kube? Oh, and that's. 
pretty big mystery at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know if Baby Cube is just like um, cause these are like a really powerful alien race, right? Yes, in my view. So immensely, uh, it, it, and because of that, I'm wondering if this is just an alternate form that allows you know more access without the you know disadvantages or something like that or mm. or do they have like larval stages that i'm not aware of you mm. know i mean that's that's possible that was As what did, i was w- wondering the first time i watched through is like is this a new stage of cubay development that we haven't seen yeah, before it's, it, it's like only after a hundred witches turn to grief and despair <laughs> yeah. will cubay get his wings <laughs> once i recycle yeah. 18 ease grief seeds only then do i grow to my full form and be able to talk normal <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the other thing too like i'm like whoa what's going on with this because like it, it was the the mini cubay or whatever is expressive mm. and yes. and he provides some important insight at times just by his presence mm-hmm. but uh definitely not f- fully communicative you it know? seems so. to be benevolent in an involved way that other incubators of past stories are not and i find that intriguing it, that is interesting, and I well also like my impressions of Cube from the old series was like okay, super powerful alien race, the ethos of a serial killer practice. I mean, it's like there's no like, yeah. empathy. What is this empathy of which you speak? You yeah, know, kind of like literally the, don't have emotions right, in their yeah. race. I mean, it's not <laughs> like they're not empathetic. They just don't have emotions. There's no there there, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So so it's like there's nothing to latch onto like that. So it's like, then you start to wonder, because like empathy, even at the most logical of us, empathy has a lot to do with, you know, our motivation. Most people, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. um, some people are beyond the scope of empathy, but then, you know, you get sociopaths and serial killers and all this, you know, you get all this, right. this pretty bad batch at some point um, when their people are completely divorced from the, the effects they have on others. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not sure it's like, well, what's motivating these people? Mm-hmm. And you're right. I mean, like everything I've seen so far with uh, mini Cube has been benevolent. You know, mm-hmm. have positive effects. So I admit, though, just because of my like past experience of mm-hmm. observing Cube, you know, the fully fleshed out form of Cube. The initial positivity on the tin may not be. Yeah, what's inside. it's like I'm waiting for a <laughs> twist. I'm waiting for like a. Oh, by the way. Turn them around and look at the ingredients, and are like, oh, arsenic. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, the sweetness you're tasting is sugar lead. Yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> so yeah, there, that's the mini cube is one of the things that's ninety percent mystery to me right now. I have to see how that plays out. Um, that and, and the entire like we we've had uh, three of the five girls appear, and that's it. Mm-hmm. But I'm waiting for more. Mm-hmm. You know, at this point. Um, we'll see what season two brings me. I find it interesting, too, that they started with the three lesser characters. Right. Not as a dig on them, but just, like, obviously, especially with Rebellion, it's clearly a story about Madoka and Homura. Sure. And their friends. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Like, they're they're not an afterthought. They're very important and critical in several moments Mm, in Madoka and Homura's development. I, so yeah. they're like the driving characters, and they're notably absent from the story. One, I think that's to their credit in that it's like establishes that you, while you can dangle these other characters in to reassure that like this is still in universe, this is still in canon, like they're here. There's an explanation for all this that involves the main story. Um, yet they've told this whole story without needing to lean on the actual main story of the original series of all, which is Homura and Monica's dynamic. Right. Their pure absence of the show is, I think, kind of a strength at this point, because it demonstrates that this show is just standing purely on its own merits. And yeah, yeah, I would say that. Like, if, they, if this had been rewritten, to not have Mami or Sakeya or, or Sayaka um, mm-hmm. or, or Kyoko, if, if that they were all out of it, but basically the same elements, it'd still be an excellent story. Mm-hmm. You know, in and of itself. I think they've been included in a positive way. Mm-hmm. But the story definitely stands on its own. The new characters stand on their own. They're, you know, it, it, it's been an interesting um, set of character development that I'm seeing in different, you know, motivations, different. Some of it's more direct. Like Felicia's story is more, you know, understandable anger and rage and, you know, the desire to, to kill the people that have fucked up her life. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so it's like, I get that. That's very human. Yeah. You know? 
Um, but then you have more advanced, like like. Uh, um, what a waste of a witch, Yachira. though. What a waste of a witch. I want to be yeah. able to destroy witches. Okay, well, deal. That one's yeah. easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, there's yeah, been wasted wishes yeah, before, but, it, but like, oh, well, brutal. At least yeah. try to get something. I was gonna say, it's like, okay, but what do you want for your wish? Oh, right. that. Oh, 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 gotcha. Okay. <laughs> you know, freebie. Um, so, <laughs> so some some of the stories are more simple and direct, but some of them are a little more involved. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm not. Hmm. I'm not sure exactly how all this is going to play out. I do want to know more about some of the characters that have been touched on, mm. but like the Amane sisters, I want to know kind of more of their backstory. Hopefully they go in a little bit of that. I mm. only get a, some sense of it now. Um, and I imagine it's all going to go. Is there only two seasons? Yes. Okay, uh, okay, there's so. The second season is broken into two parts okay. and was released as two parts, but you can watch as one go through as if it was one season. Okay, okay, mm. cool. So... Yeah, that said, um, I think that pretty well describes what I'm thinking at the moment. Do you have, I'm curious, is there anything else you want to know what I think at this point before I go in to the second season? Um, well, I want to say one, uh, Felicia, like, uh, like, we hadn't had a proper, my motivation was my family died in the original story. Like, you had a, I lost my family through my own doing accidentally with my wish, which was Kyoko's thing. Right. Um, but to actually truly have death, and it wasn't, excuse me, necessarily clear to her what was causing it mm. until the wish happened. And then that was her introduction to what witches were, was Kyube explaining like, oh, what's happening right now is a witch is killing your family. And if you want to like fight them like I can make you a magical girl but you'll need to wish for something she's like well I wish to destroy wishes, witches <laughs> and it's like man what a golden opportunity I wonder how many times in history like different cubes have like approached someone who was like around their family but not consumed in the same way their family was by the witch's labyrinth Right. and is like hey <laughs> do you want to save them like cause we saw a cube do that time and again to Monica like hey your friend's about to die hey <laughs> mommy just died like do you want to get involved do you want to become a magical girl like that was yeah, the main it, tactic very, yeah and, and that kind of manipulation seems to only make a direct sense I mean a lot of people in the heat of the moment especially would you know have a similar response I think mm -hmm. like give me the power to fight back yeah you know and yeah. so yeah understandably so um yeah yeah that that's you know, tragic, but I, I am curious to see how, how Felicia's story will play out as well. Um, yeah. uh, and th there's a lot that they could go into detail. There's a lot of characters they can they can go for, further into in the second season. Mm -hmm. But at this point, the, the biggest single question that's sitting with me is the underlying details and the sort of the, the scope of the Magia, the details of how they do things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like a better sense of what they're really trying to do like yeah okay salvation for magical girls great but mm. okay yeah. like, like what, what how does this all play out like is it are you delaying the inevitable or have you really found a way around this is mm -hmm. it something you're still working on or is it something you actually have rock solid ironclad proof that you can provide it right you know i don't know i mean there's a lot of ways you could you know develop this story mm. and i want to pick your brain a little bit about the uwasa but first, I want to just take Rumors. a slight diversion okay. to gush a moment again about the mommy fight at the end. Oh, God, Because, yes. like, we talked a lot <laughs> about how great and badass mommy was throughout it. Even with her thing she had going on with herself. Yeah. <laughs> she was clearly a badass. Um, and just unleashed, truly, like, the first time I think we could say she's fully been unleashed in that way. Right. Um, whether it's an enhancement or a morphine in some way. Like, we haven't seen her at that scale, even in the Rebellion fight. That's right. the closest thing we've seen. And, God, she's just awesome every time. But uh, I want to also gush about Sayaka in that fight. Because, like, Sayaka's level of regeneration was insane. Like, <laughs> yeah. to f 
hold off this like final blast and it's so overpowering that it blows her arm off but before she loses it to just one arm, her arm reforms and she gets another sword and blocks <laughs> it again to get two arms on it. That was so sick. What a dope moment. And the animation yeah. of that was so brutal. Like, her yeah. arm disintegrated. Yeah, well, well, she had just this overpowering ability of mommy to, to communicate how I felt about that with my wife, who mm. saw this with me. I showed her pictures of an infantry battalion. You mm. know, because it's like... Mommy is a living, breathing infantry battalion. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. And then Sayaka is just, like, so gritty. Yeah. You know, like, there's, like, yeah, she's powerful, she has regeneration, totally true, but also you're going to have to have a psychological toughness that goes with that. That's going to yeah. have, you're gonna, it's like, you're going to have to tolerate a lot of pain and just, just psychological damage of I'm being shot at more times than I could possibly count, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's Great Wall of Lead, you know, <laughs> is coming at me. Which is interesting to see her in this story so far, like, have that same, like, unraveling, like, numbness to pain mm -hmm. that she had in the original as she, like, descended into witchhood. Uh, right. But, like, she seems in control of it. Like, right, this right. is how badass Sayaka can be when she's not, like, fucking unraveling to hell <laughs> yeah it wasn't yeah that's a fine line isn't it mm -hmm. you know because a lot of things that i think might make somebody grittier and tougher um an old friend of mine said that which does not uh well basically that which does not kill you makes you more mentally disturbed um you know it's like <laughs> what he had to say about his own experiences you know so it's like like uh so basically what she's dealing with there if you can master that then it, it makes her a much grittier tougher more impressive character mm -hmm. um but it's a hell of a lot to endure mm -hmm. you know so yeah we're kind of seeing i think in that fight we're seeing like the most badass versions of mommy and sayaka mm -hmm. you know i mean that's what I, kind of what i feel like i'm seeing mm -hmm. you know to this, to this point at least which was a yeah. nice it was a very tastefully done like treat of like ah yes we know you're here for the original series Here's some original series shit for you. Yeah, not only that, but it was a really climactic battle. Yeah. You know. I so. made it the whole final cliffhanger. Yeah, it, it was something like, you know how sometimes you get seasons that end with a fizzle or something? Yeah. No, 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 this one went out with a bang. You yes, know? absolutely. Like, holy crap, you know, I, that was like some scenes in there to watch a few times. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that's I love how they did that. Uh, so, Uwasa, tell me your thoughts about these not quite witches seem to be somewhat involved somehow in the uh, wings of the ma three mages. Mm -hmm. um, and like these cubes that contain them, can capture them, whatever yeah, yeah, that yeah, is. Okay. And that's another thing I don't... Okay, I'll give you my conjecture. Because that's yeah. like, there's different levels. There's like, oh, I have a good idea. I have a hunch. I have wild random ass guesses uh, it's gonna work <laughs> okay so you have some kind of method of containment so i just take that as a, as a given mm -hmm. for the rumors i'm not sure how that power gets manifested or concentrated so mm -hmm. is that something as a side effect of the psychology of the magical girls and you're like containing that there mm -hmm. is it something that's directed from the like the group subconscious or something like that it's mm -hmm. funneled into a form of energy mm -hmm. i don't know but the name rumors you know mm -hmm. it, it, it makes me wonder like okay is this something that's more of a distributed energy like collective subconscious kind of thing getting funneled up into you know and i've seen these kind of uh, not not inside uh, the magical girl series of any kind that i've seen but mm -hmm. i've seen in other like uh storylines like persona and stuff where they have that kind of collective consciousness yeah. that can make certain like um, um archetypes and things like that so i wonder if that's being funneled in or you know it doesn't have to be either or it could be partly that it could be also funneled around like the core the kernel or core of a magical girl's you know negative side or something like that mm -hmm. i don't so I don't know how they're manifesting this stuff. I just know that, okay, very witch-like without the grief seeds. Very witch-like yeah. without being a witch. So it's like, okay, a lot of that magical power is still there. Um, and, and so I can't determine, I don't can't determine where it's coming from, really. Mm -hmm. But it's like, okay, I there's got to be some level 
of almost like an energy connection to what the magical girls can create. It mm-hmm. seems like there's something there. Yeah. I wonder what it's going to be like, oh, this witch was specifically dedicated to this, or this is a particularly powerful magical girl that can, you know, she can just crank out a witch every day. Right. You know, not a witch, sorry, a, a, a rumor, a wasse, or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. It's like a witch-like thing, uh, you know, every day, whatever you want to call it. They use them as weapons, kind of, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like they, they, they control the box and, you know, mm-hmm. unleash them, right? So I, I'm kind of at a loss. You know, I want to get into the ethics of using them on people who oh. refuse to join the group. But first I want yeah. to say, um, before I forget, something that struck me on the first watch through was, okay, <clears throat> we got, I think it was the Lucky Water was when we first got this insight of how this rumor was being spread. We oh, saw like right. the witches' uh, familiars around, like spreading the rumor oh, literally to yeah. other people. It's, okay, okay, yeah. And I was like, okay... Those witches look very, or familiars look very similar to Homer's familiars from Rebellion. Interesting. So like, okay, 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 that's a familiar. Like, I can get that. That's associated with this. But what really struck me was after the Lucky Water arc was over, and we moved on to the arc with the um, digital girl and the AI. Oh, right, right. Saw, Electric wave and all um, that. The same witches' familiars were still about... And mm. spreading this rumor, and like they came up again, and it was like, okay, so somehow these familiars are not tied to these particular uasa. Right, like right. I don't know if there's like another witch. Like I don't know if there's like some grand other uasa that's mm. like part of this or right. involved in some way. But like clearly, these are something that are tied to the group, um, because the group seems to be using these uasa. But like. It's not clear how. Yeah, and I'm not sure. You know, that's a really good point. The familiars. It makes me start to think about that. Like, so are these some things that naturally manifest? Or are they things that they found a way to create? Mm-hmm. And if, if they have found a way to create them, how much control do they have? And who does have that control? If they have it whatsoever, mm-hmm. you know, like are they deciding? We're, well, we're gonna have. We're gonna create another rumor, mm-hmm. and it'll be in the form of Lucky Al Water. Or is it just like we're gonna get what we get? You know, yeah. and and I kind of yeah, that's that's a really interesting question, and it but does seem to be uh, hazarding a guess mm-hmm. like there's some kind of link to those familiars spreading, the like there's a collective consciousness. Have you ever heard the, of a word egregore? Mm-hmm. It's a, it's an abstract one, but like the idea, it's sort of like an almost supernatural idea that's connected to some old religious uh, beliefs where if a group of people believe in something. It manifests mm. like if a group of hundreds of followers believe in an archangel, whoever, mm-hmm. then that archangel will manifest and exist. And if they don't believe, it will cease to be. I've you know? seen stories that have that exact thing, but I or, haven't heard that word before. Yeah, like the egregore of our world is money. <laughs> yeah, really, very much. Yeah. So, so, so I, I wonder if it's an egregore story. You know, I mean, just mm. yeah, we'll see. Um. The oh shoot, what the fuck was I on about? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's some other detail about the Uso I wanted to remark on. Um, oh shoot, must not have been that important. Well, yeah. fuck it. Well, sorry. <laughs> I remember there were several of them. They kept coming through. You know, even if they get wiped out. What was the, the most back. interesting? So of these stories, I think there was like three or four stories kind of sandwiched by the main start and end overarching mm-hmm. story which of them were your favorite oh gosh that that's tough like if, if i'm just trying to to take it down individually um it's more like there's bits and pieces that are my favorite mm-hmm. but if i'm gonna say what really was the most gripping mm-hmm. i like how the uh season concluded with them meeting at the memory museum and how mm. impactful that was, yeah. you know, and how that built to a grand climax fight and, mm. and did leave cliffhangers of the fates of different girls, like what's happening. Mm. Like, we're, we're following Hachio and, you know, and it's like, I'm sorry, we're following Yachio and, uh, <laughs> and it's like, basically, I can't die, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, so is that really, huh, what, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, so it, it, there are certain surprise elements like that that really took me, and then I want to see them uh, kind of fleshed out. Um, I, for aesthetics, 
there was one of the witches that was very early on, or rumors, or what, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of getting all mixed up now, but like mm -hmm. the, for aesthetics, I really like that witch that had a wide variety of pretty fabrics in her her world, like it looked like, like yarn and all that kind of stuff, like flowing out and everything like that, mm -hmm. I just think it really popped in that world, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just a matter of aesthetic opinion, like, and th that was the first time I saw it there during the series, it was towards the beginning, mm -hmm. I'm like, wait a minute, the magical girl that you know, became this, she probably loved fabrics and maybe sewing or yarn or stuff like that. And that was kind of the pretty girl thing that she liked, you know, mm -hmm. whereas it, c it could vary widely between somebody's tastes. Mm -hmm. But we're seeing that kind of sprawled out here mm -hmm. in this jarring, otherworldly focus. And know? I wonder if her wish was to become some sort of like notable like fashion designer or yeah, like it, it, good at like making stuff because her family was poor so they were just trying to make their own clothes sure like, it could have been could have been anything like that, like that. It, you know it, sometimes the wishes are very like sweet and subtle and not really taking advantage of a wish like mm. i want to make my mommy a sweater that she'll love forever right you know? yeah <laughs> okay ouch <laughs> <laughs> yeah she'll love you when you're on you know, she'll, she'll never forget you she'll have it until the day she dies because you're yeah you're gonna be dead in a month you know, i was like god that's fucking harsh man so anyways but. i will say i liked the uh in the lucky owl water story how and i on the second watch through didn't catch it super early on mm -hmm. so i didn't i don't know exactly what number it starts at but there's actually a countdown to zero of how many instances of luck they have before they're due for all their bad luck. Yeah, yeah. And that was, like, very subtle in the background. Some of that them were cool, more yeah. pronounced to, like, catch you in on it to start looking for it. Mm -hmm. But, like, that was really dope. So I really like that and just the general archetype of, like, you're making a trade, like, a deal with the devil. Like, it's totally, good. You're yeah. getting paid up front, so it's worth it. And, like, if you have this, like, measure of control... Not just of, like, self-control, but also, like, control of the circumstances around you to not accidentally burn through things. Um, mm -hmm. Burn through the count of luck instances. Right. Um, you can perpetuate this forever. And there's, like, a, there's a tempting exploitation loop that is totally allowed and presented as the good thing. Yeah, and I yeah, really yeah. like that yeah, temptation. That, that was funny too. And actually, it's funny the way it maybe feels like if you if you follow this, you might be able to use that and feel good forever. It's just mm -hmm. like heroin. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we gotta get off this now. <laughs> it's gonna be worse. The longer you wait to get out of this loop, the worse it's gonna be for you, my dude. You know, like. <laughs> and also the uh, at that point, I'm very like okay, the. Uh, uh, Order of the Three Magus, uh, they are, like, trying to do good. They're trying to change this world in a positive way. Mm. Yet they're willing to say, like, hey, we're giving this to our own people. Like, we know it's cursed. We know it's going to, like, kill them if they use it wrong. So, like, one, that gave me hesitation because it was like, okay, like, how expendable are people to them? And uh, oh, it's alternative, alternatively, like, if it's about harnessing through self-control these means that would otherwise hurt you of becoming a witch, well, why can't they use these witch-like things and exploit their power on top of their own doppel power? Yeah, and, and that brings up one of the... I'm sorry if I missed this, but, like... Mm -hmm. I don't know if this has been delineated because here's the thing like they're using these you know witch-like powers say they're kind of similar in their power form but mm. they're, they're not actual witches is there a consciousness that's being manipulated here like when they unleash mm. this weapon mm -hmm. is that a tech attached to an actual conscious being at some level even if it's mm -hmm. not a witch i mean are you using somebody like a tool are they going through any you know level of suffering for you know for being your sword well, and the other one that really stood out to me, which was the AI one, yeah. like that Doppel, or not Doppel, excuse me, that Uasa, mm -hmm. like, uh, developed mm -hmm. its own kind of personality to the point where it, yeah. it suicided effectively. Yeah, like all, all for Futaba's sake, you know, right. to get her, to help her out. That is uh, an incredible story that is not as notable uh, for, like, the elements of, like, action or, I mean, there's definitely some beautiful 
fantastical elements as she like transitions this world around the girl. Sure. But yeah. like, um, we've just never seen any witch have any type of like, like outside of Homura kind of being mentally present a little bit as she descended into witchhood. Right. They haven't. They are gone. Like yeah, Sayaka yeah. was not reachable. That was a fool's errand. Kyoko was on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um. So. This one, where it has any type of sense, let alone a sense to kill itself for someone else's sake, right. is re really highlighted the difference to me in what these uasa are compared to a standard witch. Like, these right. are changed in a fundamental way somehow, whether that's what they are is different, or, like, they're conditioned or controlled or... The mechanism of trapping, they're then changed, or the trapping itself changes them. Whatever the yeah. case may be, they're different now. Yeah, and it, it introduces another thought, too. Like, if you can reduce something to a mindless weapon, not mm -hmm. that I'm saying you should do that, but if you do, it gets you kind of off scot-free from all these ethical considerations. But if you can't do that, then mm -hmm. you have to, have to ask yourself, am I using a person as a means to an end? And if yeah. I am, that's not ethically okay mm -hmm. you know so i mean that so that that gets introduced with this and i thought that story in particular with the ai i and then you know uh, it, it, the way it played out like it was sad i mean like her family such as it was really just treated her like trash and mm -hmm. you know i i've like one of the friends i grew up with was raised by his grandparents and sana his, futaba futaba yeah so uh like uh her, her story was somewhat re relevant to like some of the, the, the things I can see. I can I can relate to it from the eyes of my friend who grew up with his grandparents and his parents were. I'll, I'll be frank. His mother had a lot of mental illness, so I could try to forgive a lot. His father was just a jerk, you know. Yeah. And so I mean, like it sucks. It really sucks to be in that position where your parents are treating you like, you know, you're worthless essentially mm -hmm. you know because like that's how she must have felt like that i mean she wanted to f be invisible essentially you know yeah i mean because of how, this the neglectful treatment mm -hmm. you know and i know uh, that, that sucks you know so you know it's easy to have compassion for her mm -hmm. and then it's easy to have compassion for i the ai the, mm -hmm. the, because she's sacrificing herself to give her a life you want she wants her to get out mm -hmm. and to, ha to exist in the outside world mm -hmm. and to have a fully fleshed out life you know, which it's it's kind of a happy ending to that little arc and that it's like, look, my family's not going to treat me well, my old family, but she has a new family with her magical girlfriends, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You know. Ah, uh, yes, magical girlfriends, the best kind of girlfriend. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will say, too, there was a note I had somewhere here about from that instance. Um... Oh yeah, I liked how the for the start of that arc, the opening song played on that radio, which was like the main way they were trying to like involve people into that rumor. Oh, okay. So they even... had that like midnight radio cast that would auto play on people's phones. Oh, okay, I didn't even remember that. I guess like in and out of my head, I mean, probably saw it, but I don't remember it. I like uh, how they they put that on, and then the like opening song started playing as like the radio feature. So, oh, like that okay. was a cute little thing. Um, there was uh, a moment where, maybe I didn't write it down, um, so this is a, oh, here we go. I was going to say this is a stream exclusive, but it's actually not. I did write it down. <laughs> um, so in that moment where she's, like, back at the family uh, that one last time to, like, collect her things. Mm -hmm. So there's, like, a five-bulb light fixture, which I, as an electrician, of course, noticed. And <laughs> so it's her, it's her two brothers the stepfather and then her birth mom mm -hmm. and her and there's only uh one bulb in the fixture that goes out and that's kind of the moment that she makes peace with leaving her family behind because mm -hmm. she just embraces that like they don't they're not being yeah. a family for her symbology there yeah yeah i thought that was really yeah. there's so that's many cool. subtle details like that in this show which is again like, these are things that I'm noticing on my first watch through, and I'm like, this is actually a really fucking good show. Well, like, it really is. Done I really mean, well. <laughs> it's sad, but it also gives her closure. You know? Yes. And that's important. It was needed for her very much. Yeah. yeah. I think it was needed for her to be able to rebuild her life and to move on. And even initially, she was still 
having trouble and was hesitant. And they, you know, I really like how the other girls were kind of like, okay, look, we're going to have to try to be cool about this. Let's yeah. try to bring her in and make her feel included. And, you know, that was, I like how they, they did that. It mm -hmm. makes them a very likable and relatable group of people to me, mm -hmm. you know, that they would be cool like that, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, I mean, it's, a lot of the individual stories are really quite good. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things I can say. A lot of times with uh, multi-character things like this, there's at least one or two that I really strongly dislike. But mm -hmm. none of the major characters, you know, there's a couple that are on the fringes that I don't have deep feelings for. Mm -hmm. But for all the ones that we're getting major storylines for, I like yeah. them all. Just yeah. to, to differing levels, perhaps. You know, let me see. Who would I... Probably, maybe because of the way I've dealt with my own issues in the past, you know, mm -hmm. which I can be sad and detached at times. Yachio, you know. Yeah. And, and sort of there's a certain... There's a fatalism there that I can kind of, you know... Both Yachio and Homura are characters that I like latched on to pretty quickly because I just like that archetype. Like oh, that yeah. kind of like clearly fucked up from something <laughs> but like isn't about to tell you about it. Like I like that. There's like mystery in there, there's depth in there, and there's tragedy in there. Those are all things I love in my characters. Yeah, that, that, unfortunately that's for all, my favorite characters that, that's, that's all very interesting and something to me about both characters I find to be noble so that Homer is extraordinarily noble to yes. me. Uh, but they both seem to be noble characters to me in that they're trying not to perpetuate a cycle of pain and destruction yes. you know they're trying to if they can't stop it at least they can tamp it down they can try to do take the most noble actions possible Homer mm -hmm. is just reliving hell ceaselessly yeah. you know to try to stop bad things from happening but even with Yachio she's like okay look I don't want to keep bringing people into my orbit and having them die mm -hmm. you know so that's why she has hesitance but I mean she still is you know a fully flushed out person with mm -hmm. her own interpersonal needs and relationships and everything like that so she's trying mm -hmm. but she's expressed her hesitance and her concerns which are very valid it's like hey look yeah. I, I wish I was going to be the one that's going to live which means I'm the one that gets to see you all die Right. You know, and I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. You're right. So we're trying to find a way out of I'd that. I'd rather just lose touch with you. Yeah. yeah really. And the, the, me too. Like if I'm like, as I say, to say someone I love, you know, like would I rather see them die or just lose touch? Well, yeah. I'd rather lose touch. At least, hey, you're out in the world. I hope you're doing okay, but I don't want to bring you into a death spiral. It's funny. Yeah. I actually pulled up a friend of mine <clears throat> from high school on, because uh, I don't talk to my friends for years at a time some friends and then i reconnect with them and we pick up right where we left off i'm just kind of i have a flow with people sometimes mm -hmm. um and it's not it's not even just like people who i'm not super close with like a friend of mine james who's probably like right up there with my best friends mm -hmm. um we were super close like hanging out almost every day in high school we oh. reconnected recently and, like, it had been so long since we talked. This is when I was still engaged at the time. He was like, yeah, are you even going to, like, invite me? Like, I'm not even necessarily your best man, am I? I was like, of course you are. Yeah. Like, you're definitely my best man. Like, what are you talking about? So, like, there, there's those moments where, like, I'm reminded for other people that, like, it's it's got to be, like, a constant thing. But I kind of pick right up. So that is to say, and I, I don't mean to cut you off. No, but, go for it. Um. I pulled up on Facebook a friend of mine from high school. Um, definitely had a thing for her, but nothing ever came of it. She was always with another guy who was a mutual friend. Right. Totally not even trying to fuck with that. Um, but also was just a super cool chick and hung out with occasionally. And, like, it was always super fun. So I just wanted to reach out and, like, see what she was up to. And then also just, like, see, like, hey, like, what's up? Like, do you want to kick it? Like, catch up, shoot the breeze. I see you're this now or doing this. And when I pulled her up, uh, it was kind of confusing at first. And I was, like, my first thing was, like, oh, change of hairstyle. Okay, interesting. Um, not surprising the direction she went for her, <laughs> but different. Um, but I was having trouble, like, finding some more recent stuff or things. And, like, it occurred to me after reading a couple cryptic posts that, like, She's been dead for a while. Like, she's passed away, like, two years ago or something like this. Oh, And, like, some of the messages yeah. are, like, people keep coming back to her Facebook page as, like, a ongoing grief process and, like, leaving a memorial oh, kind of man. message to help heal themselves through. And it was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> 
brutal. That is Dude, unfortunate. That is harsh. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we weren't hyper close, and obviously, it's been a couple of years since we've uh, even had a casual communication. But it was just brutal to like get that out of nowhere, and it was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, no, that that is harsh, man. In fact, it's kind of I'm at sort of a, a middle of my life stage here where I've started to see enough people die, to whereas it it's just become a part of my existence. Yeah. And it is not. I like everybody deals with things differently. I have come to the conclusion that I am not a fount of wisdom on this. I don't deal with it very yeah. well. <laughs> no, like like, yeah. when, uh, like the last time I took it hard when somebody died, I uh, I, I talked to uh, my bottle of rum like it was a therapist. <laughs> you know? yeah. like, pretty trashed. I have my own little personal wake uh, after this person died. Yeah, so it's kind of I don't know, man. I don't I don't have any easy answers for that. Speaking of which, shout out to today's sponsor. Two Town Cider House, the <laughs> only company that I have drink on stream that hasn't sent me money yet. Um, <laughs> also, the only one I drink on stream. And uh, also, uh, do you have your uh, glass in here? Oh, uh, where did I put it? Oh, oh. there it is. Uh, ha. There we go. Shout out to our secondary sponsor, Water. You need it. <laughs> you need it to live. Water, my favorite. <laughs> Definitely buy it. It's the most important liquid of all. Uh. <laughs> and I thought it was going to be something about the glass itself. Like, no. <laughs> manufactured by, you know. <laughs> Though I am open to glass uh, sponsorships. That'd be fine. Hey, um, it all works. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to get your thoughts, too, on the Uwasa, the one where um, we first were introduced to Mifuyu, uh, Yachio's silver-haired friend. Okay, the, um, the fake one? Or the yes. real... Okay, the yeah. Okay, guys. So seance. that we saw where it's like the... Uh, I forget what the name of it was, but it's the shrine that you wish to seance see Seance shrine, I think. Something yes, like that. Seance yeah, yeah. shrine. Um, what, what were your thoughts on that we saw and that just story? Um, I think that was a good... Uh, well, actually, I like how it uh, continued Yachio's development. Mm -hmm. um, because, like... Okay, there's all different kinds of uh, strengths and weaknesses people have. Like, Yachio as a combatant is quite capable, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like, she's she's got a maturity about her, a toughness, a power ability. She's one of the lead, like, fighters, right? It's not a surprise that she's, like, a good pick to take down a witch, right? Mm -hmm. However, this is dealing with a very real psychological weakness that I feel sympathetic towards because she finally gets to see her old friend again that she doesn't have closure with. Who actually is alive in the world, but this is a fake version. And she didn't know that at the time. At she, all. She yeah. could have, at the end of that experience, thought she still might be dead. Yeah, and it's like, and she go, but she goes into it. It's like there's that the heartbroken nature that goes into it. It's like, oh, you know, like, yeah. like there's a, like there's a, I haven't seen you in so long. I love you so much. Kind of a feeling coming from her, yeah. and it's just capitalized on to to attack her. Which it's really cool that uh, Iroha can come in and help. Mm -hmm. Right. But, you know, but as far as that, that's a good step of character development to show how much she cares. She cares so much that she sees this person appear to her and she drops her guard, mm -hmm. overwhelmingly drops her guard because she like, like, if you think about it, she's an experienced combatant. Yes. Like it takes a Very. lot. She's, to, a, she's the veteran of the group. Yeah. So yeah. it's like she wouldn't casually drop her guard because of some stupid little thing. You know, yeah. this is a deep meaningful thing to see her old friend you know even if it's not real yeah. it's there's that there there's that emotional connection that really opened her up so i feel that broadened the character it was an interesting way to expose like a weakness there yeah. it also was folded right. into the story really well for how iroha came in to sort of help her recover from her murkiness yeah. by using her grief seed so it was like it was just really well played on generally speaking i i really enjoyed the whole seance uh uh shrine kind of uh, story arc I guess to your point about the sequence of events too it feels like in retrospect on a second watch through like while I can say there's not much that I'm uh, I, while I would purport that these middle episodes of all the meat of the story does not actually have a lot that builds the overarching narrative each story <clears throat> is so tight and, like, well done and well contained. Like, every action has a purpose. Like, I forget exactly what the origin of this is, but effectively the saying or principle is, like, you don't write in a book something that isn't necessary for the plot later. Like, right. if somebody has a gun on the wall, 
it's going to be used to shoot someone later. Sure. Like, there has to be a purpose for any detail you put in a book. We're not just being superfluous and flowery and just writing shit down because people get bored and overwhelmed. Yeah. Like, that story was super tight. Like, there's the two different paths. One gets resolved quicker and then can come ally the other mm -hmm. and help break her out. And, like, using the grief seed there sets her up as a vulnerability. And that's the first existence of the doppel for her. I think that yeah, was the first time. I believe right? it's the first time, yeah. So, like that, and obviously doppels are a huge story beat. So, yeah. like, the whole thing was to introduce the doppel. And it's like, there was so much, this had to happen to do that, to do this, to do that. Boom, that's exactly what happened. There was no putt putting around. I mean, even the start, like, the, the fact that they whittled it down to the two, like, they super casually mentioned it was uh, Yui Tsu... Tsu, I don't know, Bon Bon Zai Girl. Tsu Moro? Tsu, tsu no Ro? Oh, tsu, uh, tsu no no. Yeah, that. Tsu no <laughs> Yui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm probably not, I'm not bon saying Bon Bon Zai well, Girl. Uh, That's how okay. I think of her. Okay, um, yeah, that works. She uh, had this brief exchange with uh, Yachio where she was like, hey, uh, you know, you don't need to uh, write a name down as well because it's going to probably be the same name for me anyway. So mm. I'll just do it. You stay here. Mm. And it was a really easy story device for them to pare it down to just that two-person scenario that they had down really tight. They were like, how do we work this third character in? Where is she going to be? Fuck, it'd be easier if she weren't here. Yep. Let's just write her out. Well, what a great way to do it and a very tight way to do it to tease this whole backstory with Mifuyu mm -hmm. that Yachio, or that, uh, Yachio and uh, Yui were a part of Yes. Bon Bon Zai Girl were a part of, and they have this shared history. Well, what if she just references this, and this is a big part of Yachio's character, is this grief and this trauma. Like, she's just going to respect that and just back off on word alone because she doesn't want to... And there's already this dynamic set up where, like, she was like, uh, the first time Iroha met her at Bon Bon Zai... She was like, well, I can reach out to this girl and see because she knows about different rumors and stuff. Oh, yes, she responded. Like, her senpai responded to her and acknowledged her and it's going to help you. It's going to be great. And then it was just fucking Yachio out. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I love it. That was a great moment. But it also showed that, like, compounding level of, like, okay, the purpose. And that was to establish this dynamic. Like, she has, like, she is, Yachio is the senpai. Right, like, yeah. She will be followed and respected by Bon Bon Zai Girl. Yeah, like and she and just they, will. And they show how her Yachio has more like maturity and yeah. how she manages a household and it's like, hey It's earned. It's, it's like, hey, it's it's half off on the supermarket or whatever, stuff like that. Like, yeah. like more adult considerations to have there, you mm -hmm. know, for how you know, how you're gonna use your money. Um, but uh, yeah, damn, it, I hate when a witch fucking overtakes me and I can't buy all the shit from the supermarket. Yeah, it's on <laughs> and what a fucking. <laughs> and, uh. and it was a good like for that seance uh, shrine kind of thing. I think it was a good uh, brief and interesting kind of uh, change of places there, where usually Yachio is going to be the lead in combat, but mm -hmm. this specific fight was set up to capitalize on her weakness yes. and actually ha have her her friend come help her. You know, mm -hmm. as opposed to usually the dynamic would be in the other direction. Yes. You know, so that was kind of cool. It, it adds a little more suspense. If you introduce a powerful fighter into a scenario, it can get stale if it's like, okay, every fight they take control and everybody follows mm -hmm. them and it's just like that, you know. Yeah. Whereas you, you mix it up more and it, it makes it a little more suspenseful. And also keeps you guessing, like, okay, well, maybe things won't go her way, you know. And a good way to start distancing that same uh, stereotype of like, okay, Yachio looks like Homura kind of acts like Homer in a lot of ways. Mm. Iroha acts like Madoka, is yeah, yeah. innocent like Madoka in a lot of yeah, ways. Yeah, I, I, Damsel in distress in a lot of ways. Obviously has already become a magical girl, so not to the same extent as Madoka. But this was a nice inversion of that, where it's like, okay, Iroha to the rescue. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's cool, because also, this, you know, I think personally, I also think these kinds of events are good for dynamic team building. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, that. how, do you, how would you develop a story where teams come to trust each other mm -hmm. bail each other out you know yeah. and that that resonates with real life you know mm -hmm. when you can when you have to rely on people in real life and they come through for you that develops trust mm -hmm. you know so you know it's kind of 
we get to see that play out in a realistic way, kind of, you know, in terms of the interpersonal parts are realistic. Yeah. Not, not the magical right. parts, you know. <laughs> not that so, we know of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy, no please. magical boys yet. Yeah, not yet. Yeah. It's, <laughs> although, it's, it's funny, I know there is actually one series about magical boys. It does exist. Oh, yeah, there's more than one now. Oh, okay, there there's, could be. Yeah, there's there could some be many, that have but... come out recently. It's it's a funny inversion of the trope, but not not the way Madoka is. I'm for the meat inversions like Madoka. Oh, oh yeah, like well, the thing of it is too. It's like, okay, the other magical girls, Sailor Moon, Pretty Cure stuff. Mm. You know, like great for my daughter. Let her have a fun time with that. You no, know? I grew up on Counter Capture Sakura and Sailor Moon. Sure, but, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's totally fine. Yeah. Um, in fact, I actually had a, a positive impression of Pretty Cure for her. Like, okay, I mm. want to see this enough to see, okay, I like it. It's teamwork. It's caring. It's, you know, kind of working together and mm. having some positive messages to it. Um, but even she, not too long ago, and she's nine, you know, and she's mm. like, well, you know, they always win. You know, it's kind of like, <laughs> like it's boring her. Yeah. You know? Um, That's one thing I really liked about Sailor Moon is, like, there was actual, like, problems that had to be overcome. Like, Sailor Saturn, if I remember, I'm probably butchering this because I haven't seen Sailor Moon <laughs> fucking forever. I'm gonna and get lost Crystal too, wasn't but... the same story. It covered some of the initial stuff, but then dove ahead and also kind of changed some things. So, like, my memory of what actually happened is really warped. This is the impression I had of Sailor Moon as somebody who watched it growing up. 20 years later and I'm now almost 30. Um, <laughs> so like there there were the uh, cousins who in the original Japanese were lovers oh, okay. of uh, Uranus and Neptune. Mm -hmm. um, they were always super interesting as a dynamic because of how close they were, which makes a lot of sense in retrograde, the whole just censoring for American audience. Oh, there's so much of that that happens. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so that was really cool. Um, but they're also like they were kind of a turning point because I think they got introduced before anyone after, in the order of planets, anyone after Jupiter got introduced. I think mm -hmm. those two were introduced first, if I'm remembering right. And everyone after Jupiter in the order of planets is like next level scale type of person. So they're like the, it's late enough in the story where it's developed to where they're going around and like fighting things on a bigger level because they've grown in power so much, right? Mm -hmm. Um so they use these weapons that are a lot more, like, metaphysical in nature. Like a mirror that can reflect someone's soul. Right, And right, things okay. like that. Um, Sailor uh, Pluto is, like, this god of time, essentially. <laughs> okay. So, like, that's super cool and what an interesting concept before all the recent popularity of multiverse and different timelines and stuff like that. Um, what an old school fucking 90s thing to be like, oh yeah, also here's one of our magical girls. She's the god of time and lives <laughs> in a separate reality. Um, and then uh, Sailor Jupiter isn't really in the show very much because apparently there was a conflict, which again, I'm probably butchering, but like she, it was so immense that she had to like basically do the Gundam like self-destruct thing with oh, all okay. of her power to like take the enemy with her. Hmm. Like dark for sailor moon for like og yeah, yeah, like yeah. bubblegum sailor moon like yeah, what the was, fuck that's pretty no, dark it's, it's like i grew up on robotech because mm -hmm. i'm i'm 48 uh <laughs> but it's like so i was like eight nine years old it's something like that i'm not too far off the mark mm. and yeah they had heroes dying that you yeah. know they had people you care about roy foker dies i'm like oh big brother you know yeah. so it's very like heartbreaking so th and th i didn't have that in the western cartoons mm -hmm. so it can be yes. subtle but i like how magical girls as a genre, at least since they got really big, um, but even pre Sailor Moon, if you get into some of the more original inspirations for the genre before it became big with Sailor Moon, um, <clears throat> it's always had elements of darkness throughout. Right. You know, there was real tragedy throughout. There were real stakes throughout in a lot of areas, and it was very subtle because it was definitely meant to be a bubblegum experience. Sure. But like, it was always kind of there, and like. We've taken it to the nth now with Madoka and oh, Magical totally. Girl Sight and saying, all this shit. Like, for this year, <laughs> there may be others that I just haven't dived into yet, but, like, mm. in terms of having this be so much more gripping and yeah. the consequences so much more long-standing and, and yeah. you know, like, they really hit hard. Like, I don't think I've had this kind of show, anything quite like it, since the first series came out with, a, mm -hmm. with the death and the feelings of finality. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of a throwback to that. Now, it's it's not as dark. This Magia record is not as dark. Not yet. <laughs> but, but, it's, but it's gripping. Yeah. I'm definitely 
definitely engaged. So I and I care about what's going to happen to these characters. Mm. So let's see. You know, <laughs> like like who gets to live? Who does anybody get to live? <laughs> you know? It seems uh, before because I, I want to come back to the that uh, Usa we were talking about the shrine Usa. Oh yeah, okay. But before I do, I want to continue on that note. Uh, so, what is your thoughts on like, what were there moments where like it kind of like gripped you in a way that like kind of vindicated some of the things I had said about like the series is good, it sticks to the canon, like obviously you have a favorable impression of the series overall. Oh, totally. But were there moments like that where it was like okay this seems like really solid and like really well done. Like what stood out as moments where the series kind of proved itself to you? Cause I definitely got the vibe the first time I watched through, which is part of my own bias. The first time I watched through being on guard as a fan of the existing series. Sure. But like, I definitely got the vibe even the second time through of like creators flexing their muscles, proving like this show is like good and stands on its own merits. Watch will prove it to you. Right. Yeah. Like, did you get that same vibe at all? I did. I was more open to it because you had watched it first and you didn't explain anything to me like in detail, yeah. but you said good. Okay. Well, <laughs> Colby says it's good. Then they must be. And so I just took it like when they, when they presented it to me, I took it on a, a yeah. base value. Kind of like, Oh, okay. They're keeping the universe alive. They're, if I say know. it's good, <laughs> <laughs> I must mean I, as a fan, it's good. <laughs> and, and, and it really was. And it's so it's, it's like, they quickly proved to me, though like in some of the initial battles mm -hmm. uh the artwork as you went into the witch's realm and mm -hmm. that alternate psychology and everything was very well implemented yeah. um just like the original yeah they just pulled like, out just, all the stops yeah just like the it's original. almost like the same people made it yeah, which i didn't like, know at first when i watched it was like very surprising in retrospect i was like well it made sense in retrospect but it was like reassuring like yeah okay yeah. sweet like it's they're going to be the same team from now on, and they can do little side things like this, and it's good. So for me, like, after I saw the first examples of that, I mm -hmm. pretty much trusted them, because partly because of you, and then partly because I was just seeing it play out. So yeah. I didn't need to get brought as long as much as you did, because you were, you were going to a blind. Yeah. You know, I had at least the, the approval. 100% blind, yeah. yeah. I had no context of whether it was good or not. Mm -hmm. I, had, I, I had discovered it from my original Rebellion video. <laughs> Watch that. Um... <laughs> If you have, like, an hour and a half to spare. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, also, uh, somebody at the end, when I had uploaded that, had also requested a video doing a breakdown of it, like I did for the Rebellion movie. Mm -hmm. Um, so I already was gonna, I hadn't watched it at the time, but was already gonna watch it because I just stumbled upon hearing about it and this whole game that it was based around and, like, made to promote. Um, but then I was like, okay, if somebody, like, actually bothered to comment on the video... I'll, I'll definitely watch it and make a video about it, too. I hope it's good. I hope it's not something I have to, like, kind of rag on. But, like, I was very pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I mean, if I had a major complaint, I really would list it. Mm -hmm. I don't have any complaints. Uh, the only thing, by comparison, is that I like the increased darkness of the initial series. Mm -hmm. But the, the second season is still unknown yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. So let me see how that plays out. I'm not saying everybody has to die, but I do like the right. feeling of heavy consequences. Yes. And that there's there's already been some death and some serious suffering, so the darkness is there enough to keep me really gripped. I mean, <laughs> I guess I'm a messed up person. It's like <laughs> uh, I if everything is too saccharine sweet, it just kind of, I don't know, it's like a kid's story at that point, right? right. It's not really you know, appealing to me. Yeah. Um, but things were serious enough, dark enough, like, you know, your actions have consequences, and we're living in a, and like, how do I put this? The physical laws of the universe do not care about you. You know? <laughs> That's right. So yeah. it's like, and you get that kind of a feeling. Gravity will help you not float away and die, but it will also pull you off a skyscraper and kill you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very much, it's <laughs> very dispassionate to you. So it's like these... The laws of the universe are kept intact. Mm -hmm. They're very true to them. They add additional elements that I think are compelling, but don't violate any of the initial laws, so to speak. Yeah. The character development's really good. I really just, I, I can't think of anything negative to say. I would be let down mm -hmm. if in the second series I don't see some, like, finality. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that everybody has to die, mm -hmm. but I need to see things come to a satisfying conclusion mm -hmm. where I kind of feel like it's went somewhere. Because mm -hmm. right now there's a ton of loose edge and uh, open-ended uh, questions, and that's that's acceptable. It's mm -hmm. season one. Yeah. So right now it's I have a ton of good impressions mm -hmm. and a reservation of judgment to see how they wrap everything up. Yeah. 
So that's it. Yeah. In the original release order, there was like a year, year and a half wait between season one and the first instance of season two. Oh, okay. It was like, man, I'm so glad I found about this like later on. Because oh, Because yeah. I wouldn't have wanted to wait like a year and a half on that oh. cliffhanger. That was fucking totally. brutal. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm sitting there now like, whoa, who's, well, kind of like, who's actually dead? Who's with the Magia? Yeah. You know, and, and why? You know, and it's like, I, I got a lot of questions in my mind. <laughs> One thing I will note, too, I'm going to come to this screen here to just uh, highlight, at least for the English version, uh, Magia Record, which, if I haven't already said it clearly enough, is a mobile game that this series was made to promote. <laughs> like, I just can't fucking believe it. But <laughs> um, it ended on uh, October 30th of this year. And had plans, there's like a timeline, I don't have it at handy right now, but had been winding down for a few months prior to that in anticipation of concluding. Mm. So I'm assuming was having a dwindling user base and stuff like this. Um, and Magia Record came out in the sequence of the first season came out at the start of 2020. Mm. And the first part of the second season came out in like fall of 2021. And the last bit of the second season came out in uh, spring of this year, 2022. Okay. So it's like, they stuck with this series and finished this story to the end of life of the fucking thing <laughs> it was made to promote. At least for English. Like, I don't know if it's still out there in Japan land. But it's, it's definitely done here. Okay. So, like... The commitment, like they put this story, and they made the story. I'm, I'm assuming. Obviously, I don't have access to the game now, and it's, it's from clips I've seen. It was just your standard kind of like, collect a bunch of different girls who you, whoever you think is best girl, you can roll for different outfits and shit, and they oh, okay. all just do <laughs> automated shit. Like it's just another mobile game for magic or for your <clears throat> anime girls. Um, right. Maybe there's more depth. I don't. I'll never get to play it, but. Um, the uh, game itself seemed largely unnotable, but it seems like, the, from what I've read, that the game was tied very closely to the story that we're seeing in the anime. Right. So, like, the story was written for the game, and the anime was made to promote the game, but I'm assuming that the, game, the story must have been written knowing they were going to do that. So they wanted to write a super rock-solid addition to the main story that could be accepted and embraced by fans who are just involved in the anime and never even hear about this mobile game and stumble upon this later like i have yeah and, <laughs> and are accepting and don't feel like it cheapens the franchise in any way you know it seems like that was the main yeah. approach for them yeah i don't think it cheapened it at all and not only that but like as a gamer um you know i i have had my most intense playing sessions for different reasons. But mm -hmm. one of those reasons can be that I feel very attached to the characters. Mm -hmm. And I can actually, it actually affects my intensity of play. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I really care about the characters, it's like, you're not going to die. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like that. So it's, it's like, like the, do you name your Pokemon thing? Yeah. It's it, like, uh, well, I could have a random Bulbasaur die, but I don't know about Leafy. Like, <laughs> like, it's like, it's like I'm wearing this Nier shirt, right? Yeah. And like it, when I played Nier Automata and the Peace Village was getting attacked as part of the storyline, right. I was like going ham. I'm like, I don't care if I take damage. I don't care. You know, it's like yeah. I'm just going out of my mind to, to bring the boss down in minimal amounts of time yeah. so that I can actually get there. And like, because I don't know, a game mechanic could be timed. Easily, it may not be. Exactly. Yeah. It could be timed. It's like, oh, sorry, you took uh, two minutes and 15 seconds to kill that boss and so it, 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 all you got is death there you know yeah. so i don't know because i'm playing i play blind you yeah know, too. Of, and it keeps that suspense up you know mm -hmm. so like if you give me a good story like this and then i went to play the game i would mm -hmm. care so much more about what's going to happen yeah you know and, and and part of that is that sense of like i'm not going to let this happen to you mm -hmm. you know <laughs> yeah. everything like almost like how do i put this it's like caring about your characters yeah you know? Um, so the, some of the best stories and games have brought me in like that. This would, this totally would if I had done that. I know I, I'll never have a chance now, but I would have, I mean, and maybe the game wouldn't have lived up to the story. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's always possible. Um, but I would certainly be brought into the universe well with this. And mm -hmm. I, no doubt, I, I, I like pretty much everything, how it played out. Um, I think they needed to have new personalities, new miniature storylines, and new team dynamics and interpersonal dynamics to keep it fresh and interesting. And they mm -hmm. did that. 
They didn't mm -hmm. just try to, like, it would have sucked if, you know, sometimes you get a story where it's like, okay, we're just going to have the same storyline again with the exact same character types again and just right. playing out again, and then it's just recycled. You like this story? Well, here it is again with fresh designs for the characters. A slightly different face, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, oh man. Because I've actually played games like that. Mm -hmm. And it just sucked. It just, brought, it just took the life out of the game for me. It's like, yeah. I'd rather they take a risk and sometimes miss the mark yeah. than to not iterate and make anything new. Yeah. So I think they iterated, they kept the core of the universe intact, they added new interesting dynamics. Uh, I mentioned this towards the beginning, but I do like how they took the art style and I thought it was a better expression of a, of a beautiful near future kind of world. Yeah. And I, I like some of the, the kind of like the panoramic stuff they threw in there mm -hmm. of like multiple high rise towers with gardens strung across each or like a, a expansive forest by a, a tower of glass and steel. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was, it's all that that was nice. I, I, I actually like that more than the initial series, how they yeah. implemented it in this one. Well, know? it's a hard needle to thread, too. Mm -hmm. It's like Gundam, I think, is the best franchise that's an example for this because they've been mm -hmm. going for so long and every Gundam is largely the same story. <laughs> but, like, they they find ways to keep it different and fresh. And, like, certain eras of Gundam will feel a certain way. Like, the one we're in right now isn't my particular favorite. Like, Iron-Blooded Orphans I thought was really good. But, like, not spectacular, like, Double Zero. Right? And right now I'm watching Witch of uh, Mercury, which is, like, very, like, Gundams at school. Like, okay, like, I'm watching it, the animation's gorgeous, Sunrise fucking goes hard on mainland Gundam series, so, like, it's not a problem for me to watch, but, like, okay, I mean, she's at school, she, she's, like, fighting for the tide, or for her friend she, her first friend she made, friend, I'm not sure the other person even considered her that at that point, mm -hmm. but she's fighting to defend this person and try and get her out of this weird main, arranged marriage thing, and then somehow... By doing so, becomes involved in the arranged marriage in the other guy's place for the guy who's a jerk, and so <laughs> now she's like arranged to be married in this lesbian marriage, and she's like, "But we're, we're both girls," and she, the other girl's like, "Oh, you're you're from Mercury, the more conservative there, right?" Like, there's very, <laughs> it's funny, it's cute, it's very well done, but it's just like I'm so much more. I grew up on uh, uh, Gundam Wing, where it was like. The characters are very reserved. Like, it takes a long time for you to, like, see their interesting characters play out. And at first, like, Hero's, like, very hard to understand. Like, not hard to understand, per se, but, like, it seems stupid, some of the shit he does. For, the, for reasons that don't really, like, make sense in his character until later on. Mm -hmm. And... Like, Duo is very easy to understand initially. He's just a kind of relatable guy who's, like, pretty cool, but, like, is still normal-ish, but is a Gundam pilot. Like, okay, he's kind of almost the insert character and not the main character of Hero. But, like, there, there's the love dynamic between Hero and his love interest, uh, Serena. Um, but then there's, like, it's so not about the five Gundam pilots. Like, uh, the opening arc... Spoilers for Gundam Wing from the fucking 90s. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, the opening arc is like, okay, there's these, there's a space faction and Earth faction, as always. And the Gundams are outside of these two factions. It's not made by anyone. They're like a third party that's rogue. And okay. they're just trying to prevent war nominally on the side of space. Mm -hmm. But, like, they can't be from space because they're a different weapon. It would, like, ins it would spark the war if they okay. were from space um so they try to there's a military group that works for the earth sphere that's like a good analogy for the military industrial complex that's driving war because oh. that's what they do yep. as their job that's is the make center. the war machine yeah. yeah um and they're called oz at least that's how they're initially presented hmm. um they turn out to be a lot more nuanced and about honor the honor hmm. of battle which mm -hmm. is a very interesting thing. Like, Wing's just great. But anyways, my point is, um, the the kind of capped, the starting arc, <clears throat> is there's this big conference where different uh, representatives from space and the United Earth Sphere are there, and there's, like, only one or two Oz representatives. Mm -hmm. But Oz is guarding the event. They're providing security because it's on Earth. Mm -hmm. So the Gundams are like, 
one of their missions is to, and it's the first time all five of them are united, is to attack this and destroy Oz, who are there, but not hurt anybody else. Just hit Oz, and that can really send a clear message what the Gundams are here for. Mm-hmm. You know, whose side is the Gundams on? They're on the side of peace, period. You know, we're not here to hit one faction or the other. And it's a peace conference. And the diplomats actually find a path to peace successfully. And they're on their way out. And Oz gives all a few of these key diplomats who are the biggest advocates for peace an offer because the conflict has started. They disband the thing early. You can take our private unmarked thing and get out quicker there instead of having to go with the rest of the diplomats who might be targeted in this thing because you're so critical to this conversation. You're clearly one of the leading figures for peace. So they do that, but the unmarked plane is registered in the Gundam's target list. Mm -hmm. And they kill all the peace advocates from both sides (sighs) and doom the story to one of war. And it's like, and now they are universally the bad guys in both areas, and they have no home to go to on either side. <laughs> and it's like, that's wing. <laughs> so it's like, <clears throat> I, that's what I look for in Gundam, is these things of, like, I mean, I was super young at the time, so I didn't catch all those details, but, like, it made that deep impression of me of, like, all right, the pilots, they're going to hit self-destruct and kill themselves, and that's going to be their way out sometimes, and you've got to be okay with that. They're going to kill innocent people in the line of their duties, and then they're going to, like, be traumatized by that throughout the entire series. Like, they're going to, like, have these goals that they and ideals that they cling to because of these past events, and, like, do it to a fault, and they're going to pay for it. Like, that's what I like in Gundam, in addition to the just general space opera and the political stuff. I love the details in Wing from that, too. But, like, some of this new Gundam is just, like, very high school anime okay and it's like it's it's fine it's good and i'm sure it appeals to a broader audience and there's a lot of trying to revive the mech genre Mm -hmm. but like i'm i'm in it for the politics and the space opera well you can make a better story with that i think and like for me i would argue (laughs) yeah well yeah i mean it's what's more compelling and it's also quite frankly i think it's doing a couple things one it's keeping the human relations more realistic Mm -hmm. in that sense and also uh, it's a lot more thought provoking, and, yeah. and I think it's it has some pretty Im- important elements that you're talking about. Not the least of which is that you know that relationship between war and profit, yeah. um, uh, all the human psychology that goes into it, and also like it's it's odd, but I've I've had more of a brass tacks approach to real life conflicts, actual wars and things out there, mm-hmm. and I've had discussions with people in my family where it's like they're. I'll say maybe relax is not the best word, but they're very accepting of some of the wars that are going on. Yeah. And I, I start to explain to them, these are the things that are going to happen. This is the yeah. amount of death and heinous crimes that are going to be committed in these conditions. It's unavoidable. It's unavoidable. It's, it's like these There's are, anything these we've are, learned from Fallout, these war. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's, it's going to be happening. Are you okay with all this? And the answer yeah. is inevitably no. Right. You know, but it's easy to not think of. If, you know, it's not really brought up to our attention we don't have to live through it here it's all yeah. it's all a faraway place yeah um yeah my my time with the mech dramas was really a long time ago robotech and macross and stuff like that mm. it, it matured a lot uh and i would if i was going to come back to it i would want to have that same kind of a thing the mm. high school drama wouldn't really fit with me the last good anime series not not the last good there's several good anime series i've seen recently but mm. the last phenomenal one i think i saw for me was Doctor Stone? And I think it's episode. Well, I haven't 10. watched Doctor Stone yet, but everyone praises that. It's re- I gotta watch that. Yeah. I might pull that up soon because and it's so universally I, I, praised by this people is, I like. <laughs> speaking in general terms, yeah. the science is excellent. You mm-hmm. know, uh, the engineering would be much more difficult. And what I mean by that is like there's a scientific principle that's laid out, which okay, that's mostly or overwhelmingly true. Mm. Um, and then, like, if you're going to use that scientific principle to try to create something, sort of the engineering of it, um, I, I'm not saying you couldn't do it. I just, in real life, it would be much more trying and difficult with a lot more fail states. They do allude to that. Yeah. But that doesn't bother me at all. I, I like the fact that the science is pretty grounded. Mm. Uh, episode 10, I think, mm. is a love letter to our professions. You being an electrician, mm. me being an electrical engineer. Yes. You know, it, it focuses on the power of electricity. You know, mm-hmm. and it's and it's pretty glowing. <laughs> how uh, 
because it's been a while since I've heard the series brought up. How did it end? Like, did it have, a, like, a nice conclusion of an arc, but there's clearly more if you read the manga, or was it... Clearly more, and but they 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 wrapped up a lot of the interpersonal loose ends a mm. lot, but the as far as the greater question of why and how this is happening, that's mm. not fully, fully wrapped up. Okay. But they're... The next, was it satisfying, though? It was satisfying to okay. me because I... I got enough of everything wrapped up on the personal level, the character level, on their own stories. Mm. And they're basically going to be going on an adventure to try to figure out, you know, like, hey, we're going to be traveling now to figure out what, how and why all this stuff happened. Yeah. You know? Okay. And so, it, so it's cool. And I'm okay with that. Like, it's a good leave-off point for me because it, it, it closed the loop on a lot of the main characters that, mm -hmm. that were wrapped up in the story. You know, okay. and all at the same time, like, I understand if they're going to continue a manga, that it's it's a good segue yeah. to it, right? So, and, but, like, the, the element of it, too, it's funny, it's like an isekai that, mm -hmm. you know, the the magical power is science. You right. Know? So, you know, <laughs> yeah, interesting inversion. And it's, like, one of the things I can say, it's, I'm not a scientist, but I've, you know, taken these science courses... It, you're closer than an engineer. That's pretty it, close. <laughs> well, I mean, it's closer than probably a lot of people are. At least I'm close enough to have a deep appreciation for it. Mm. So I'll take a science course, I'll learn things, and I'll use them. Mm. And it's a satisfying thing where I came to enjoy it by learning it first and then learning how useful it is and getting a feeling of satisfaction by using a scientific principle. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, like, engineering... It lies on multiple structures, I'll say, but one of the one of the center points is scientific principles, mm -hmm. and you're just using those a lot of times iteratively to try to design things or to assess things or to create something, and you're doing it like you get experience and know-how and repetitions in there, whether you're doing simulations or doing design work or whatever you're doing, um, but the 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 foundation of all that comes back to a lot of scientific principles. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just trying to use them to do something, to create something, bring mm. some birth something to life, which can be laborious. Yeah. You know, but, you know, it, it can even be tedious as hell at times. But for me, everybody's different. They like different things. I like the simulations I do. I like mm. the simulations of the huge, like the grid and the, like the huge, you know, like the assessments of that. It's so multivariable. Mm. There's so much going on that you always have this like, oh, I have an intuition what's going to happen, but you get little surprises. Like, oh, yeah. so is that really, oh, wow, it is that way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I learned something today. You know? So it's really fascinating to me. Yeah. Um, some stuff I've done has been repetitive as hell. You know, I'm not going to lie. Some of it is like, well, I did that. I'm done with that, you know. Yeah. But I, I, I like what I'm doing now. So I need to watch Dr. Stone. And yeah. this is still a conversation about Maji Record. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Segwaying back to the Uasa of the Shrine. Okay. Um, yes. So thoughts on the other thing that happened at the Shrine, which was Ui and Iroha. Okay, yes. And their interaction um, with the little baby Kyuvei in tow. Um, what were your thoughts on that side of the arc before Iroha, uh, reunited with Yachio? Oh, okay. Um, well, I mean, initially, maybe it's just me, but it seemed pretty quickly like, I don't think it's going to be real, mm. you know, cause it's like, we're dealing with the, the, the rumor, we're dealing with the other worldly stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was already primed to think it was going to be fake. Yeah. Well, know? so is Yachio, but she seemed to get pretty hook line. Yeah, she sure did. Yeah. yeah. I think Iroha was more just emotionally aware, mm -hmm. you know? And so, I mean, I think it was interesting that they pulled the ump on that part. It's like it's pulling on your subconscious. It's almost like, mm -hmm. uh, like it would be like, okay, who would make the greatest emotional impact to you if they yeah. appeared right now, you know? Mm -hmm. And then how much are you going to be able to see through that illusion? Mm -hmm. You know, so that, that, that seemed to be what was playing out in the mechanics. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't surprise me that it would be Ui, you know, because mm -hmm. that's the that's a core of her story. She's struggling to get her memories back mm -hmm. and struggling to understand, like, what played out. And she's mm -hmm. getting other characters involved, you know, like the girl she was with at the hospital, but she's not getting anywhere near a full story, yeah. you know, at least not yet. And um, so that was an interesting further step into it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was also a, uh, an interesting step to understand Yachio's sort of like psychological weakness or the impact of having her old friend reunited with her. And, you yeah. know, uh, I mean, there have been times in my life where, you know, I've lost people. And if you would have the right timing and sprung something like that on me, I imagine mm -hmm. I would be brought to my knees by it. 
mm-hmm. you know. So yeah, I mean that that's my general impression of it. Um, Uwe's fake was clearly not properly fully manifested in the way Yachio's fake mm, was. Totally, totally, yeah. So uh, <laughs> one thing that I wondered about on the first watch through was why is that? Is it because um, Uwe's not real in this world? Or has been removed from this world by some way. Or, limited or just because she, she, Iroha yeah. doesn't remember her. Yeah. So I want to get your thoughts on that aspect of it. What do you think was leading? Because okay. these Uasa, in a similar way to witches, seem like once they're doing their thing, they're all powerful at doing their thing. They're sure. not necessarily all powerful, period. But this was the first time I've ever seen a witch or witch-like thing like have this kind of inability to properly function in the way it tries to yeah and i I, my impression now this isn't definitive but Mm. my impression was that it was because the very memories are very like impartial like if i think about something that i have fuzzy memories about Mm -hmm. right um you know like how to get somewhere that i haven't been to in a long time Mm -hmm. you know and i'm like okay if i needed to remember every twist and turn how long go down every street i wouldn't have it in my head right right and so if you tried to present that to me on a map it'd be a really messed up map and if i took a step outside of it i'd be like this is fake right like it's like i'm pretty sure i'm not going to teleport here there or whatever it was my my memory's gonna have holes in it (laughs) and Mm -hmm. i'm guessing that's what was happening there is like they can only pull out of you what's already in you Mm -hmm. you know so if you have crystal clear strong memories that resonate with you mm-hmm. then they could probably pull it out and make a hell of a deep fake on you right right but for iroha she didn't have that she had mm-hmm. strong feelings but like a very incomplete fuzzy memory and mm-hmm. if you've made something like that manifest it probably would look fake you know yeah. be like okay yeah about that... the extent that it shows up in other girls dreams because they know about about, uh, about as much about yui as you do yeah yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like oh, okay you know obvious bullshit is bullshit kind of you know yeah. that's what she's seeing there and so that's my impression of why she's able to break away from it so much more readily mm-hmm. you know whereas yachio was just set up for the fall there because it was something that she clearly distinctly knew was burned into her memory yeah. had strong emotional resonance and she wasn't gonna you know it was just an achilles heel for that reason it's interesting i never thought about it from the opposite perspective of like maybe yachio's manifestation was so clear because it's so clearly traumatizingly burned into her mind on a daily basis about this person and, like, reliving these problems and, like, the problems that occurred around the two of them. Like, maybe it was that Yachio's was particularly clear and Yui's was probably still more distorted than average. But it might be an, a- an average experience might be closer to Yui than what Yachio got. Yeah, it could be, but well, Yui is like, I mean, in that case, it's such a, it's a, it's a, a oddball because yeah. strong emotional resonance, very important, but also incredibly fuzzy. And we yeah. don't necessarily get that. Like if you're going to ask me yeah. about strong connections to people, they're That's not true. fuzzy, you know, like they're burned into my memory. Like I really remember my father, he died many years ago. Mm-hmm. And so if I was like, I'm thinking about times in my life where I could have been reunited at, mm-hmm. you know, at the seance shrine like that, it would have gotten me and it wouldn't have been vague. It would have been yeah. exactly him down to every thread of the thread of fabric that the clothes he wore, yeah. the, the, the way he carried himself. I think it would have all been there to take out of me. Mm-hmm. But that's a, that. Uh, it seems almost like Iroha presents a, if not unique, very, very uncommon challenge mm-hmm. to this kind of a, a magic use. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, my most potent memories, my deepest emotional resonance <laughs> is Are vague. Gone. Yeah. yeah, it's like vague and, sh- and not a very and, human thing. And yeah. murky. And if you try to create that, usually that'd work great, but not mm-hmm. on me because you know it's like you can't create a shade of something just human perceptions are mm-hmm. going to see that like if you if you tried the same thing with my father and it was just like a faded shade of you know what i mean like they mm-hmm. uh, maybe i'm exaggerating but you know if it was clearly imperfect it'd be like mm-hmm. nah dude you know that's not my father that's something you're taking out of me to trick me with yeah you know right so in, in some ways and this is something i've talked about with people before if like strengths and weaknesses are all relative you know like ha- uh, having something objectively like how do I put this? Being able to lift a tremendous amount of weight is a strength, but it may not help you if all you really need is to run fast. Yeah, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. So it's kind of, you know, it's all relevant to the situation that you're in at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
Hachio's downfall. I mean, or Yachio, Yachio, Yachio's downfall, essentially. Um, I want to get your thoughts too on so the the one Magus we've been introduced to of the the order of the three Magus or mm. whatever they're called, the wings of the three Magus. Yeah, the genius. Um, so we we have we have these like this interesting like hierarchy too of the black feathers seems like new recruits largely able to be trained in the ways of doppel mm. um i'm not sure if they have access to usa both okay. in retrospect and in the first viewing mm, yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah. but uh clearly are involved with the process and know more about it than we do as the viewer or as our main characters do yet on right, the outside yeah. of the group um, and then there's the white feather with uh, Yachio's previous friend, mm -hmm. who clearly knows more about the process, clearly has more influence over things, um, but we don't know to what extent is involved in all the nitty gritty details. We've seen some shots of the scale of this group with just how many magical girls are involved in one meeting. Like, God knows if that was everyone. Like, um, very good point. There might be many white feathers. It's unclear at this point at at, at what level different people are involved in the scale of this whole thing. But we we also know that then there's the tier of that Magus who we've been introduced to now. Um, so thoughts on uh, her, uh, the Magus, and also uh, just like the group in general. I know it's, again, very little to go off of right now, but do you, are you catching any vibes? Is there anything that's particularly stood out to you about what you've seen from them so far? Well, for the, the Magus here... Um I don't have a really great composite picture, but this is what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. This is what I think is being presented to me. Mm -hmm. They're a, a highly analytical character that puts things into mathematical models. Like mm -hmm. earlier in the show, they're talking about, this is the percent chance that we would be friends, 0.004% or like, right, how right. would you even you know put a formula on that? But I mean, back of the envelope equations like that are famous with really brilliant people. I don't know if you have yeah. heard of a scientist named Fermi, mm -hmm. like the Fermi equation and like how he's Fermi like back paradox. at the back of the oh, found Fermi paradox. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, okay, maybe the, she's doing her own version of that, but for friendship alignment, but <laughs> yeah. her own back of the envelope equation. So she's that kind of person, I guess. Right. So she's presented as an analytical genius. Mm -hmm. And so it's valuable that she would be I think that was think the through. other one in the three person group with Uli and the Magus. I think the Magus is the one that made the perpetual motion train. Oh, okay, they're not Isn't the same. That right? Yes, that's what I was thinking. Also, that's another. Well, okay, maybe I I'm think mixing I up. might be misremembering though. I'm not hundred <laughs> percent sure on that either. I, I could be mis mixing this up because honestly, uh, yeah, maybe I'm just being maybe I'm. Confused. It's all in a flashback that's white bordered around the edges and kind of they're, not emphasized by the show, so it's yeah, hard for me to I, remember. I, I might need. I <laughs> sorry, well, no kidding. Like I might need to either watch it again or I might need to see it play out. But what I remember, I do remember the perpetual motion machine, yeah. which is another thing of like, she apparently created this, and it's like if you're trying to make a statement of you know groundbreaking scientific discovery that yeah. would do it because we don't have that right no you know? sure. in fact in trying to create a machine that has no losses right it's that's yeah. just okay you're kind of you're almost getting metaphysical at this point like i hey look i'm i'm the i'm this world's newton sorry it's yeah. newton kind of thing it's almost, okay i get it i'm impressed you know but uh so, gosh, I, I can't give you a good answer though because i'm i'm too murky that's, mm. that's what it is for that sorry Sure, sure. It might come to me later, but um, it, I, I, and I don't want to belabor it too much, but I also want to say uh, just thoughts on like the connection with Ui, uh, Iroha's sister, um, and the Magus. Like so, there's clearly some sort of intertwined thing that, given so far the rest of the story, everything seems to have been thought out pretty well and yeah. really well written. I will say, as a non-spoiler, everything is still well written. Okay. Um, I'm not 100% on the ending. I think there was a part of it that was rushed. I wonder mm -hmm. what your thoughts on that will be. Um, but it is it is in a way that damages the story overall. The story's mm -hmm. still very strong and tight, and I wonder what my second viewing of this is going to be. Uh, maybe my thoughts will be different this time. Yeah. But uh, uh, Yui just seems to be popping up in so many different places and ways, but not in a way that's clearly discernible yet. Do you have, like, any thoughts on rhyme or reason with her? Oh, man, I thought about that. And that's I alluded to that a little bit earlier because I don't know. That's my very first conclusion is 
I don't think I know. But the ideas I have, it's like, okay, there's an obvious, obvious family resemblance. Is she some way connected to Madoka? I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how is she connected to all this, like this Magia group? And, you know, she could be one of the originators or, you know, I've even considered that she could be a doppelganger for Iroha or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't think so. But, you know, and so it's like, it, it's, 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 I had that similar thought on my first watch through. It's funny you say that. Yeah. And it's like, I was kind of, well, almost like, have you, you ever seen Fight Club? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's like Tyler Durden effect, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, like, there's two of me, you know, but I don't think so, you know, it, it occurred to me, um, I, I, I think as they, I would expect that as they un, unravel sort of what's happening with the Magia, that mm -hmm. Ui is going to be connected to that, mm -hmm. and then I think like some of her purpose and what happened to her or around her might be revealed mm -hmm. at that point in time. The only, like figure that I remember really well is that genius figure and her mm -hmm. hyper analytical exposition on things like that. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, maybe she's at least part of the brains, if not entirely the brains behind this. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, what the ambitions are of the other people, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, honestly, Iroha could have been wrapped up into it as well in some ways. Like, she doesn't have memories of, of Ui, right? Mm -hmm. But She remembers visiting her, though. Yeah. So she wasn't, like, absentee at the time. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I should say, she's had those memories removed. That also makes me big, it kind of makes question of like, okay, so how much was was Iroha wrapped up in all of this? Mm -hmm. You know, was she part of that foundational, you know, creation? Mm -hmm. She was certainly there at the hospital with the other girls. Yeah, it's kind of you know like you think there would be a, a chance for a very serious impact there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's yeah, I expect her to be connected some way. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a conclusion. And last uh, thought, kind of along the same line. As we're kind of winding down here a little bit. Mm. Very interactive chat today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, wish for Iroha was revealed in the first season. Um, to try to make Ui better. Yes. And help her recover from whatever disease she had and was in the hospital with these other girls with. Right. Um, it's not clear that they all had that disease. I don't know that that's true. That's not what I meant. But right. just that she was in the hospital oh, that's the alongside other these other girls. The other point, too, is that it's not just her memory that's gone. Mm -hmm. It's that Ilya was at the hospital, but there's no record of her. Yes. You know, it's like... It's Physical like, manifestations beyond just her house have been erased. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the, So it's like reality itself has been somehow warped. Mm -hmm. You know, not just her memories of it. So that's... So I thought because of how um, the last time we'd seen reality warped was at the whim of a wish... From yeah. somebody directly involved with the warping through Home Run and Monica's mm -hmm. dynamics. Um, when it was revealed that Iroha wished for Ui to be better, and like it's not clear what came of that or why that would play out in any missing memory at all. <laughs> like, that's a, another mystery that was tacked on in a very like, well-done way, I thought of, like, it satisfied that thirst, and then immediately made me more thirsty. It was like drinking mm -hmm. salt water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, there's a, there's a few major things I've had conjecture around. Mm -hmm. And Ui's role into all this, and the Mag Magia's and purpose, you know, like, they've stated their purpose is just, like, a salvation for magical girls, but what they're doing beyond that and how viable that is. There's a mm -hmm. lot that's open-ended right now. Yeah. Um, I know that I don't know. So mm -hmm. I like really there's different levels of certainty that I have when it comes to Ui. It's tons of conjecture. Mm -hmm. So I, I threw out different ideas. Uh, it doesn't mean it could be none of that is true. Uh, it could be that it's something else that has to do with the, uh, like, you know, the other thing, too, is that when you start to deal with the foundations of reality getting altered, I start to think of Homura as well, mm -hmm. you know, and how she could play into all this. Or maybe not, you know, but that's because it's like. It, it, like in the first series how they went through the iterations again and again and again of her yeah. reminding time I wonder if some of that could have been spun out of this mm -hmm. you know if Homura has some kind of connection mm -hmm. um, if not Homura then somebody with a similar power mm -hmm. you know or some or that mechanic used in another way mm -hmm. and it could be connected just, just to a wish mm -hmm. in and of itself could just be that uh, uh, Iroha's wish mm -hmm. has 
warp reality to in order to make it satisfied it had to warp reality to make all the pieces fit mm -hmm. but that also scrubbed reality of a lot of its you know mm -hmm. like subsequent pieces that would be there before the wish mm -hmm. right so i'm not sure you know there's a lot of places you could plop down that mechanic i, I hope that you come back to the end of this video <clears throat> as we're wrapping up here and rewatch this conjecture once you've watched season two. <laughs> I think it'll be very, very interesting moment to rewatch this particular ending conjectures you have because there's you're you're saying a lot of different things. No one thing is like spot on. Mm -hmm. But there's like you're you've picked up on so many like subtle elements that there's so many grains of what is coming in there. Like, ooh, it's yeah, well, that's, I love it. This is, is why a, I wanted to make this video with you. Yeah, that is an excellent <laughs> example of where my brain's at right now. Like, I'm not prepared to say anything's definitive. Mm -hmm. I have all of these, like, mm, wild-ass guesses. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's like I know they're totally, like, there's a 2% chance that's right, you know? Yeah. And, but many, many, many guesses like that. And probably something of it's right. Mm. Probably some of it's got to be wrong, too. You know what I mean? And I'm just not sure. You know, right now, I feel like if I was pressed, like, hey, win a million dollars if you guess. I'm just rolling dice. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, like, it's probably something in there. Probably one of those things is there, but yeah, that that's, I can't be definitive. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I will be. <laughs> I'm going to know soon. Yes. Um, so that's where I'm at. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, we've been going for two hours and 15 minutes now. Almost looks like live for a little longer than that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good video, long video. Yeah, right. <laughs> Is there anything uh, you want to cover that you haven't, uh, or just have as closing thoughts before we wrap it? Hmm. I don't want to ask much because I just want to be surprised by season two. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I, I kind of want to. Usually, I'm not. I'm not really spoiler sensitive mm -hmm. for in my life generally, but this time around, I think I'm just gonna watch it. So I won't ask anything yet. I'll just think about things until they happen. Oh, so. <laughs> I'm excited for part two of this video where we come back and review the second season and the series as a whole. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I have questions written down in notes where it's gonna, I'm gonna get my answers, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because like it's funny, you ask me some things if I if I took a moment and jump back and just read through all my notes. Oh, I was thinking this. So you know, there was probably some stuff. I'm just I've thought about it enough to not remember every thought that I have associated with. <laughs> so you know, that's that's what it is. Right. On. But yeah, honestly, right now. I highly recommend this series. It's good. It's really good. Yeah. Um, even if season two was just okay, I would still mm -hmm. recommend it at this point. But I got a feeling it's going to be a lot more than just okay. Reading of uh, season one in isolation. If if season two, uh, well, I guess if season two was never made, that would have implications for the ending of season one and how lack of satisfying that could be. Sure. But putting, putting that kind of thought aside, just if you could rate... Season one in isolation on a scale of one to ten. Yeah. What would you say? I give a solid nine. Nice. Okay. Very and, good. and keeping in mind that like, the original series is. It was so groundbreaking to me. Yeah. It me was too. so kind of like shocking and just gripping. Yeah. I don't. I'm trying not to say this, but I have to. I think it's a ten. I yeah. think it's a ten. It's one of those ones I'm just gonna have to rate it as a ten because like. Even I'll say it, it's a 10. Yeah, it's like, you can't find a way out of it, because, you yeah. know, I mean, like... It, if not, the original series, Rebellion was definitely a 10. Yeah. Both, I think it's very hard to argue that yeah. Rebellion was not a masterpiece. Yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, this, being at a 9 right now, for me, um, it, it has a lot of build-up, and it could go in either direction. Mm. Not knowing what season two is yet, mm. you know, even if season two wasn't great, it still would have been a first great season, first season. Mm. But assuming that things get wrapped up well and they keep, even if they just keep the same quality, it can only go as good or up from there. But uh, mm. on that topic, how do you rate uh, season one? Uh, I would say it, there, there's a couple axes I'm considering, right? So one is like a faithful adaptation of the original spirit of the canon and the source material. Ten. Okay, yeah. It's done very well, and it proved itself, and it took time to prove, like, it, it knew it was a app spin-off game promotion and had to justify that it's not that. <laughs> so I really appreciated that quite a bit, and I, I feel like um, if somebody was introduced to the franchise through this, 
they might have a slightly different experience of it mm -hmm. because it might be like a lot of overwhelming or a lot of assuming you know how things work already. Mm -hmm. um, so it might not be a best entry point to the series, um, which I mean, why would you pick this unheard of <laughs> fucking thing? But yeah, I mean, it just is a thought. Um, so I, given that, and this is obviously as a side story spinoff kind of thing going to have that lower viewer, I like that they took time to say something kind of directly to the hardcore viewers who are going to be the core of the people that watch this. Sure, right? yeah. Um, so I really appreciate that from a creative perspective, so that kind of elevates my score. Mm -hmm. um, but also, even if I can try to take that factor out of it, I think it was just very well done. Yeah. Like, it's just the same quality, to your point, of the visuals of the witches, mm -hmm. the kind of scenery throughout... Um, the thought put into the world and the tightness of the storytelling uh, is just really well done. It has all those hallmarks of like a really strong like 10 series. Mm -hmm. So again, there's a lot happening. There's some returning characters that are different and not fully answered yet. So in just isolation, it would be hard to give it a 10. But I, I think it'd be a strong contender for 8 or 9 as well. Right. Yeah. And I mean, really, even though it, it, it's hard to make it stand on its own... I'm giving it a stand-on-its-own rating, mm -hmm. but really how I'm going to feel about the series is going to have so much to do with how Season 2 plays out. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, and that will almost inevitably change me in retrospect. I could be yeah. I, I could be rating even higher. Oh, wow, that connects in such an awesome way! You know, because yeah. you can't really... <laughs> in the end, when I see how the, the different layers connect and how the storylines, you know, kind of get answered, that's inevitably going to change my opinion of the first series as I learn more about the characters and why they did things and... You know. Dark Souls is great not because of the uh, way the levels are beautifully drawn and animated um, and rendered, but because you can kick that fucking ladder down and get back <laughs> at the same point. What the fuck? It's so in snark. Like, it's the beauty of the retrospect of all oh, yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, I love how it all kind of intertwines and connects in on each other like that. It's, yeah, it's, I'm, but I'm, I'm a total hopeless soul's head, you know? Uh, <laughs> So yeah, yeah. That, that's it. Um, I think that's all about, about all I've got for Magia Record. Very know. well. Then we will wrap this up for now. We've got uh, this, uh, this has been your host, Colby Flipston, Normal Clipston, <laughs> <laughs> and PV Eric. I don't know if you, if that's that taken to you. <laughs> no, that, that, that seems to be really fitting. Cause... He's at the time going through a <laughs> level one only run of Elden Ring. So, yeah. I mean, I find that very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, uh, what progress on Melania? Oh, I, I've made it to the second phase a few times. Yeah. I have to figure out her multiple... You know that multiple attack she has where she sends out <laughs> copies of her body? Yeah. I have to get that down. Because right now I'm like, dodge, 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 dead. You know? And uh, so it's like, I'm, I'm... God, I can taste it, man. The uh, way you describe this level one run of it feels like my run of it. <laughs> like I just it's just brutal like I can now I don't I have no interest in attempting a level one run of Melania <laughs> um, and I, well I say this this is what I've noticed because I've done level one runs for Demon Souls Dark Souls 1 2 and 3 mm. and it makes me so much of a better player now I'm never going to yeah. be like world class like some guys out there I'm not saying that but a level one run will really force you to get good. Yeah. You know, because there's just no, I can't just buffer it with hit point levels and heavy armor, right? Right. I'm right. going to have to dodge. Yeah. <laughs> or parry. I, par I parry her a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like her spinning attacks, I can parry those pretty repeatedly. Mm -hmm. um, but her faster attacks, nah, she dices me up if I try to parry her. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, this is one of the things I think, uh, in addition to just your wife doing the voiceover work the va work mm -hmm. um you gotta start streaming some of yourself playing this like once we get you a nice setup there because then one you can remotely attend these as well um uh, make this process a little easier perhaps um though i do enjoy having you here in person this oh, right, really yeah. well um but also uh one if for nothing else just for me so i can watch you do this because <laughs> this is just ridiculous like i don't know I mean, I'm sure there are streamers who do level run one runs and stuff like that. There's tons of stuff out there. But I certainly don't follow them. Right. And <laughs> to know someone in real life who does that, I'd like to see it. Yeah, there's a lot of self-hatred involved, you know? <laughs> 
why do I do these stupid, you know, so, <laughs> yeah, I, I still have some high quality bosses, and I might, like, I'm probably honestly going to take Millennium down pretty soon, but mm. I have to fight Malaketh the Black ba Blade, and mm. everybody has strengths and weaknesses as a boss, he tore me up pretty good when I first went through, like, he was one of the few bosses that were just really handed my ass to me. Mm -hmm. You know, so <laughs> he has some nasty status, like he'll hit you with a status effect that causes your hit points to continue to decrease yeah. and to cap down like, yeah. for a certain that amount of time. That was brutal the first time I realized what was happening. Uh, I was like, I'm, oh, fuck this guy. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I am not healing. I'm just going to stay hurt. Wait, why can't I drink the Estus? Drink it again. Oh, good, I'm glad I wasted a charge for nothing. Yeah. I guess that's my max. <laughs> Great. And he's fairly, like, how do I put it? He's got a fairly extensive moveset. He can be quite agile, and he has area of effect attacks that you really have to be careful about. You yeah. know, he can, he can obliterate, you know? So it's kind of, yeah, that's... Uh, and as, I, I, I fought him a couple times level one. I didn't really get into it, but I'm like, you know, I, wanna, I just had the itch to do Millennia. Yeah. So I jumped over to Millennia, you right. know? And I will come back to him, though. I love Elden Ring. The fact that they took that open world thing to try and like freeform the direction you can go even more. Oh, I love it. Allows yeah. for stuff like that. That's so great. And I mean, even in a level one run where it's not about like, well, I can go farm other areas that are lower level areas. It's like, it's just nice to not have to go through that boss I can't beat. <laughs> like, I get it. That's part of the brutality and why I love Dark Souls. But also, it's nice to go to a different boss that I also can't beat. Like, to have that option. It's still just as brutal, but at least it keeps me fresh and engaged with the game and not so hard on the burnout. Yeah, I could see it. I think that's a great thing to add in there for that reason. If, even for me, like, I'm glad the option's there. Mm -hmm. I admit that historically, and it's, I don't know why, I just get, I get on one sometimes. Not always, mm -hmm. but sometimes I get on one like, no, I can do better. I can dodge a hundred percent of the attacks, you know. It's yeah. like <laughs> yep. I'm gonna get it down, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's kind of, you know, then when I get in that kind of mindset, it it's like ultimate focus until I finally truly, well, because of the level one run, until yeah. I really feel that I have a much higher level of competence with a boss. Because really, uh, when I went through initially, I leveled up and I leveled up hit points, mm. you know, so I could take a hit. Mm -hmm. And I wore decent armor, and you know I just had a number of mechanics helping me out, mm -hmm. so that I could get to learn a boss fairly well, but tank through it sometimes. Yeah. And on just being honest, like my first run through it, like sometimes I'd face tank. Yeah. Like, like okay, I know it's hard to dodge, so I'll just you know. I have no shame in that. That was my whole build was fucking face tank. <laughs> yeah. And some bosses too. The you hit a break point where it's like. Oh, well, I'm taking no damage, so poke for free, poke for free, yeah, poke yeah. for free, bleed charge, poke for free, and I'm done. Yeah, I, like, I learned nothing about this boss. Like, yeah, really. <laughs> and it's like, for me, like a lot of people, I despise revenants in my first way through the, the, the teleporting poisonous, you know, spaz out on you enemies, nah, yeah. with a million arms. <laughs> but what I found out later, and the, like, and I'm sure there's a million ways to take him down, but for mm -hmm. me, my first run through, it's like I had a great shield build for a while, like I had a great shield built up and just, oh, oh, tink, tink. Tink, tink. That's nice. Hack. You know, yeah. it's like you're not doing much against that. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's like you can't. You, it's like you can't make a dent in the shield. You know, <laughs> this guy got. A, I think I had a build up. You know, the one the uh, golden. I forget what they're called, but the golden knights. Uh, they have a big wall shield. You the know, like I, I, yeah, the golden order knights. I got one of those and I buffed it up. I leveled it up a bunch, nice. and so just had endless. You know, like uh, durability. Endless. What's the word I'm looking for? But you know what I mean. Like the stat that allows uh, you to the, not the lose guard. stamina. Guard building. Yeah. But guard like it was almost impossible to guard break me. Yeah. You, you had to be like a dragon or something to guard break me, right? So mm. the revenant just couldn't do it. You know, mm. it, my stamina is going tink 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 tink. Oh, okay, that's nice. You know, <laughs> yeah. I got all the world to do with the stamina now. Now that you're done. Go ahead, dude. Whole animation. I yeah. got time. Yeah, it's got very much. It's like go ahead get tired <laughs> yeah you know so yeah there, there was there was that now uh i've taken down revenants as a level one player but i don't yeah i have to be smart yeah <laughs> you know it, it's it's i have to dodge them and i have to time myself really correctly and then you know that kind of thing so hmm. yeah well it's one way to get better force myself to get better yeah right so. one way to get better with dark souls continue to die until you improve yeah <laughs> yep Try it's kind true. of it's like it's uh, a uh, uh, wrapping it into the magic world there uh, mm -hmm. it's like being home run. yeah exactly <laughs> you know, it's like very it's much like being run, you know <laughs> Alrighty, well in the future, once I uh, successfully uh, peer pressure him into getting a YouTube channel set up for him and his wife, uh, we'll get some uh, at signs featured here 
to tag his channel. Obviously, my ats are all over my channel and stuff, so if you're interested in that, follow it, obviously. It's all here on Twitch. It's all here on YouTube. There is a Twitter associated with it I'm trying to start using, and there will be a Patreon as soon as you guys are actually interested in it. It physically <laughs> exists. You can use it. No one's going to for so long. I'll figure that shit out later. Um, <laughs> all right. Very good. Any uh, last things? I think I'm good. No, all right. Very well. We'll pull him back for thoughts on season two and the series as a whole probably like what, two weeks from now. That's her. That Something works, like yeah. That. Set your calendars for the stream. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. And...